Human beings who listen to our show, how you doing? Where you been? Happy February. Welcome to another episode of Guys We Hugged. It's the anti <laughs> bad girl shaming Ooh. podcast. It's never going to not girls. sound weird. I know. Well, it's funny because everyone, you know, on, on the YouTube comments is like censorship. It's like, guys, it's yeah, a, it does it, suck, but we want to get in that algorithm, baby. It's a minute. It, you can handle a minute. Anyone yeah. can handle a minute. And if you can't, then you need to discuss that with a professional. Mm, I agree. I and truly if, believe so. If you want to email us, it's sorry about last night show at gmail.com keep sending in your questions and your stories and your you know inquiries for advice today's subject line is boyfriend gave me an std doesn't pay rent and recently cheated on me yeah but i'm sure you still love him and that's the only problem (laughs) hey guys i love the show and you both so much i'm really curious to see what you both have to say about my situation and would appreciate any advice or insight specifically about what either of you would do let me just take a guess break up with him Mm, probably (laughs) uh i'm truly sorry if this email is incredibly long oh god i met my my boyfriend in December 2021 through Tinder. I'm 24, he's 25. We were casually dating and we would see each other every weekend and every uh every other weekend to every <laughs> other weekend. Okay. Every weekend to every other weekend is what I assume you mean. He lived in a city two hours away from me, so we take turns coming to see each other. We ended up discussing later. Uh, we were exclusive. We truly got along so well, had a lot of the same morals and values, and had so much fun together. I ended up driving the majority of the time and stayed weekends with him and discovered that he uh, was a very heavy drinker. Mm. Well, that's how you discover that, which I really wasn't concerned about at that point because it didn't affect me until every other weekend when I wasn't with him. He would call me at 4 a.m. drunk as fuck and say the most hateful, nasty shit to me. Oh, God, he's abusive. Uh, Given given he was absolutely shit faced and didn't remember most of what he said. I'll also take this time to point out that some people get shit faced and don't say mean, nasty things. So I'm just saying something is bubbling below that surface, baby girl. But at that point, I had been so over it because it happened multiple times and decided to end things with him. Yay. Then my birthday came around and I gave in to my emotions of missing him and feeling a Alone and I contacted him asking for him back. It is, tr- uh, it truly is the most pathetic shit, but uh, shit ever. But I re- uh, unfortunately have huge attachment issues and I'm truly afraid of being alone or being single, which is a whole other thing, but will make sense with the rest of this email. Mm. I mean, it makes sense that you taken him back. Uh, he eventually took me back and we established again. <laughs> so not only you had a fight for him you back. A, yeah, you had a bag. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> bag for a baby, that'll work. Uh, we established that we were exclusive. From when I met him to this point, he was the only guy I slept with. Oof. Oh, boy. A month later, he started being really unresponsive to my text and I asked him why he was distancing himself. He never responded. The next day, I s- decided to go to the gynecologist just to be safe. I got, <laughs> you had an inkling, girl. I got my results back and ended up having gonorrhea i was devastated because i have never gotten an std before and trusted him some context when we first met i told him we are going to use condoms and he said no he hates condoms one red flag out of many and like i a damn idiot no yeah he just (laughs) said no and she was like he said no and she was like okay then no condoms oh my god and like a damn idiot i said all right whatever he's the only guy i'm seeing so i'll be fine famous last words i texted him a classic long ass paragraph going off on him about giving me an std and lying about being exclusive and basically we were done and to never contact me again and blocked him a few days later he texts me through a random phone number saying he's sorry he doesn't know how he got the std his life isn't the same without me and he wants another chance nice of course i ended up responding telling him we can meet up and talk about it. No, girl. We met up and he was so stuck on the lie that he didn't sleep with anyone while we were exclusive, which obviously he has. And I ended up finding out later he slept with over 15 (laughs) women after he met me. (laughs) Yowza. That's a lot of shit, man. (laughs) Yeah. I'm surprised you only got gonorrhea. Wow. Which is fine, but it isn't fine when you raw dog everyone and put everyone's sexual health at risk. For horrible- No, it's also not fine even if you didn't get to an STI girlfriend. Yeah. (laughs) 
for horrible reasons I literally can't excuse, we decided to get back together but make it official. For the ne- that'll make him not cheat. No one feels bad for you is the thing. Yeah, for the next few months I drove literally every single weekend 2 hours to hi- to see him. During the summer we decided we would move in together. But I would, my- lo- I would love to know the thought process behind this. Uh she doesn't want to be alone. <sighs> uh but at my apartment when he moved in, of course everything was great and fun. He decided to do school full time and not work and I agreed to pay rent. Oh, this keeps getting worse. And all the bills since I was working full time so he could focus on school. Wouldn't yeah. it be nice if a man did that for us? Wouldn't it would be. Lovely? It would be nice. Uh, very often he would go out drinking with his friends and not invite me ever and wouldn't come home until the next morning. Girl, where are he sleeping? Luckily, I did have his location. Ooh, healthy. And he texts me throughout the night, but he would go out and blow money on alcohol, but not pay me rent. <laughs> Girl, I mean, we'd, we'd get into man. arguments about him not inviting me out, him not posting me on social media ever, or that's letting, the least of your yeah, worries. Who gives a shit about that, or not letting me go through his phone. Well, and, uh, what? That's not a, that's there's going no trust through, going through someone's own phone is not a normal part of the relationship. And no. if you think that you should be allowed to go through someone's phone, you have a such a fucked up relationship. Yeah, you got to go to therapy, girl. And he would gaslight me all the time, calling me insecure and having too many too much anxiety. Eventually, I confronted him about multiple lies that I had proof about and he apologized and moved on. Yeah, he moved on. Then I found out he posted a story of us on Instagram, but blocked multiple girls from being able to see it. Sure. And you only found that out because you looked at his phone then. And I was truly embarrassed because he clearly was he's clearly doing something on the side and wanting to appear single to women. The most disturbing part of this is that multiple women want to be involved with this guy. Oh, recently, my friend found his profile on a dating app. Oof! I confronted him again and he apologized, said it wasn't anything. It wasn't anything (laughs) physical. So you it was know, just emotional. You know, men just That's love and having worse. chats with women. I just want to fall in love with someone else who's not you. Wait, if somebody said that to you, they're like, it's not physical. It's then it's just emotional. Emo- and you were on a dating app. Yeah, it's not bad. like a friend that you knew or something. Well, like especially that. if it's a if it's a heterosexual man saying that because like they don't even have something emotional with the usually their girlfriend. Right, right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> As you'll see later on this episode. Hey, wow. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I confronted him again and he apologized. Said it wasn't physical. Just had conversations with women okay that is a lie which is still cheating he deleted the profile unfollowed all these girls on instagram and gave me his phone passcode and lets me go through it so unhealthy my friend i truly let him walk all over me and i'm so scared of letting him go because i don't want to be alone and i have horrible crippling anxiety over it well you're gonna only way out is through you gotta go to that desert baby girl and come back i've done too much for him that i've never done for another guy we've never slept with another guy too yeah like this is the only guy get rid of him uh and all of that is just the tip of the iceberg i know i truly need a therapist yeah all that money that you're spending on this uh on rent to have your uh low class low life boyfriend live with you use that for a therapist Therapy, for yourself my friend am i truly just a downright huge dumb fuck for dealing with this yes uh have you ever really loved someone and forgave that shit that they didn't deserve forgiveness for how the fuck do i eventually see my own self-worth thank you guys for reading this i mean the only way you need to build a reputation with yourself right now your reputation with yourself is not good it's crumbling You have no foundation to go off of. And the only way that you are going to develop respect for yourself is by dumping this cheating asshole. That's the only option. You have to dump him. You, you're sitting there, you knowing you're scared to be alone, and then while you're watching this awful trash man uh, fuck up your life and continue lying to you time and time again, the only way you're going to salvage any self-respect is by dumping him. That's yeah. it. Kick him out now. I would love to know what you think is going to happen to you if you're alone. That is worse than anything that has yeah. already happened being in this quote relationship. This is not a relationship. This this email is so over the top that it feels like someone is pranking. Right, us. right, <laughs> right. Because every there is there. He has zero redeeming qualities. Right. Um, I am. I'm so embarrassed for you. Mm. I, I am I, the secondhand embarrassment. I am dealing with reading this email and the mm. way that you're allowing yourself to be treated. It is so over the top that I actually don't even feel bad for you. I just feel embarrassed for you. And honestly, 
like I know there's a part of you that's like I deserve all these things and like I'm actually gonna second this and say yes you do deserve all these things because you're putting up you're saying every time you let him back into your life every time you let him, him treat you like this you're saying yes this is what I deserve so then I'm gonna say yes it is what you deserve girl until you make a change no this one. is so pathetic no one is going to come in and save you you have to save yourself and it hurts doing work on yourself and getting over these insecurities and things that you have with your re- your own reputation with yourself they they hurt they hurt put your fucking helmet on get into get into the war zone with yourself you got to do it you owe it to yourself to have do you want a good life or do you want a shitty life where you continue to lie to yourself you have to dump this guy my fucking god also this this fear of being alone like I don't know how We're many men gonna... are there. Like you could find another person to yeah, be with yeah. easily. It's uh, your self esteem. You're alone. You're already repairing. alone. You're yeah. already alone. Well, so yeah. yeah. So I don't even know what this fear of being alone is because you're the most. When you're in it's... a relationship with someone who's not respecting you, uh, let me tell you, that's the most so alone lonely. that you'll ever be. Yeah. In your whole life. Yeah. And there's there's got to be a part of you that thinks you deserve this, but like you need to face that part of you and you need to dump this. Mo- Just pull the band aid off. Stop thinking about it. Stop asking people for advice about it. Stop talking to your friends. Just fucking do it it's and it's gonna be hard that's okay a lot of things that are worth doing are hard and they feel awful but you gotta do it if you want a life for yourself yeah i, I mean i i don't know what friends are in your life that would possibly tell you to stay with this person anyway not no. you didn't mention that they did but it's like do you have any friends or has this person overtaken your Isolated life so much you. that you've lost the respect of anyone who would be in your life also like where's your family where's is there anyone else in your life because that's another sign that you are in something really fucked up yeah if there's no you don't mention anyone else really in here um because your whole life uh is dedicated to this guy who's just an absolute fucking loser personal responsibility my friend that is that's the word of the day okay you get get some and then do what you got to do and really like you know i know you like you write i truly need a therapist as like it's a cute quirky thing like it's you not do. a joke and it's not cute and and you take that money that you've been using to pay uh for this guy's to be on basically a fucking staycation and use that on yourself take that money and do it to, uh, uh use that on yourself yeah. and guess what that's one hour extra a week that you don't have to be alone and i know like you know we can't see into the future or whatever but 100% this guy's not going to stop lying to you all of a sudden yeah get a He's fucking dog or something if you can't yeah. be alone yeah, this rescue is, a dog this is this is absolute insanity yeah you cannot go on like this do things that are in service to others that uh, you know that's another way to to to, to build your self confidence self esteem and, and your reputation with yourself but you gotta work on this do it now you're gonna regret it if you hold it off. Yeah, and also the longer you wait, the less good quality guys you're gonna have because you're gonna 100%. be just be fucking aging. You're gonna be old. It's yeah. true. Clock's ticking. Yeah. Ugh, you're gonna be 35. Listen, yeah. I wish that was different, but I can't. You know, I can't change society. <laughs> so right. I wish we could. We mm-hmm. tried, mm-hmm. but it's not gonna happen. Uh, and come see us live, guys. Uh, I got a bunch of tour dates coming up. Vancouver, Canada. Well, Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, I think is the province. Uh, anyway, House of Comedy, March 16th through the 18th. I thought I was doing Dallas later in March, but I'm not. That that day got moved. I don't have a new one so i'll let you know when i do uh laugh boston april 14th and 15th edmonton canada i'm at the comic strip april 20th through the 22nd detroit michigan house of comedy i've never been to detroit i'm so excited april 28th and 29th and philly i'm doing a live album recording at helium one of my favorite comedy clubs in philadelphia may 11th 12th and 13th tickets are not available yet but they will be soon uh for vancouver they're up uh, christinahutchinson.com or my instagram which is at christina hutch and then i have a patreon where you can join Join me on a Zoom uh, up to four times a month um, for group, in quotes, therapy, because I'm not a licensed therapist, but goddamn, am I pretty good at giving advice at this point because I've been doing it for a while. And yeah, the, the the amount of people that are in each each Zoom are growing and it's really interesting. And I feel like we move we move mountains in these Zooms and it's really fun. And you also get um, a monthly episode of The Voices in Our Heads, which is my solo podcast. If you want to listen to 89 episodes of those for free, though, you can do that by going on anywhere you get your podcasts. And then uh, thank you so much to everyone who came out uh, over the past couple of weeks to Austin, to Houston, to Toronto. Great audiences, great turnouts. I appreciate it so much. It's been fun. I think the new hour is coming together quite nicely. Uh, and then the only show that I have left on the on the books for right now, this first half of the year, is Dublin, Ireland. Okay, Ooh. That's uh, at Whelan's. It's on Monday, April 3rd. I know a weird day of the week, but that just when it fit into my schedule, because um, I am going to try just to go and enjoy your country with my friends. Mm. Uh, so 
again, Dublin, Ireland at Whelan's. That's Monday, April 3rd. The ticket link is live. It's on Ticketmaster Ireland, but it's also in the Linktree link in my bio on Instagram, which is at Philanthropy Gal, and also will be at uh, CorinneFisher.com. Buy those tickets. Again, just buy them sooner than later because otherwise the venues gets goes, oh my God, no one's coming. And then everyone buys a ticket the week of, and it just really causes, if you know you're going to come anyway, stressful. just buy the ticket just now. Buy the ticket now. And I would appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> the worst is when like everybody buys tickets way last minute and you're stressed out and then you get all these DMs that are like, oh, they're sold out. Like, yeah. You should have gotten the tickets now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And bring a friend. It'll be a fun time. And uh, we'll also do some, we'll do some therapists with an actual licensed therapist because Tommy, my best friend, who is a licensed therapist, Tommy. will be there. Um, and I did, I I did ask him if, you know, he's a very charismatic, charismatic therapist. So I asked mm. him if he would want to be a part of it, mostly because I'm interrupting our vacation to perform. Mm. So also, I, honestly, thought, I thought I would give him a little bit of uh, <laughs> stage time. Tommy is a great podcast guest. Yeah, he he's is. really good on shows. Tommy's he's, a great. He knows what he's doing. Tommy's yeah. a, very funny that you bring that up this week, but. Um, Why? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I could even. Talk. I was like, I well, whatever. Tell me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this because. So I found out like during Christmas that that like Tommy talks to Frank like oh weird pretty like semi regularly oh because Frank has a Smashing Pumpkins podcast so funny and Tommy oh loves my God. so he just like brings this up casually <laughs> when me and him and Grant were out wow. uh, for like holiday drinks and like I wasn't like that's weird I was just like kind of shocked because you know like I don't have any bad feelings towards Frank Frank was like right. has honestly been very lovely about the fact that I created an entire career based on our breakup he's been very nice about it, it was very nice about the book I have no complaints about we shouldn't be together he's you know there uh, everything is uh, is uh I have nothing bad to say about him um but it was just like shocking because it's like you know I'm friends with one of Tommy's exes but this is not an ex that like yeah. smashed his heart into a million pieces. Right. Like, I'm not friends with those exes. Right. Because I was trying to think, I was like, well, have I done this? Um, you know, have I, like, what have I, like, have I done something like where I was like friends? Because I was like, oh, I am really good friends with one of his exes, but it's an ex that he's like on fine cool. terms with and, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. That's so, the so I was just like in shock a little bit when I was like digesting it. And then he did ask me um, recently, he was like, fr uh, Frank asked me to be on his smashing pumpkins oh. podcast and oh, so of course crazy. i tried to negotiate i mean as a joke i was like yeah sure tell frank that when he comes on guys we fuck that you'll go on his smashing pumpkins podcast <laughs> oh yeah Get i mean out of it for us i'm totally kidding uh kind of uh i would never like be like you can't do this until someone does this for yeah. me but i really do i would love frank to come on this show um but uh, yeah, it, that just made that just like made me laugh so much. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, because it's just like, oh, well, out of all the, I mean, Jesus. out of all, I mean, if I God, if I find out that any of you are talking to James, I'm never speaking to you. Again. No, are you I gotta you? be honest, I, I'm I never speaking him. to you again. I block him or unfollow him. He's I not forget. even on. We don't even know where he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if he's dead or alive. To be honest, his Instagram has been deleted. Unknown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I know where he is, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so that's very funny that you bring that up. But yeah, so we will. Well, we will be uh, doing a show in uh, in Dublin again. Uh, Monday, April 3rd, ticket link is available. <laughs> that just <laughs> made me laugh because it's just almost just like, huh. You know, I don't because I don't really check in every now and then I'll like look at his Instagram just to see like what what's doing? up in his life. But yeah. like there, I don't have any like feelings about it other than like, oh, I hope things are going well for you. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. the only feeling that I have. That's a good feeling. Um but it just like it was I, I was just like truly like stunned. I was like, wow, that's like someone's connected to a whole like X part of my life. I was like, oh, that yeah. was like 10 years ago at this yeah. point. That's a difficult thing to hear at, at when you weren't expecting that's it, even weird. if it's even without the bad feelings. Well, it's just it's, it's also soft. just like some yeah. a lot of times people tend to bring up things to me that are do. like in that are in a very casual <laughs> manner that are truly <laughs> earth shattering you don't care right <laughs> you know and it's like just as much as i have, have a hard soul huh just as much as i have moved on for that from that and i and there, there's zero part of me that has yearned for frank in any way for i mean years and years and years yeah uh he had a huge impact on my life and i spent a long time absolutely devastated over that breakup. <laughs> yeah. so there is a 
part of me that's just like just like walking all over that part but i was like but yeah i was like but how much do you like smashing pumpkin yeah is it that much (laughs) i was like surely there has to be another smashing pumpkins (laughs) podcast um but yeah also like tommy's always been like that he's i I, you know part of it is just being from michigan he's always just fucking friendly and like has a million friends and is inviting all these people that i barely like to to things with us and i just go oh this is you know this is we're just different in that way but oh yeah well 33 with William Patrick Corgan on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, there's Smashing Pumpkins podcast with members of Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I'm sure Tommy would love to do Will, Billy Corgan's podcast. Well, we've met. I, I've met Billy Corgan with him. Yeah, we went well, to a really intimate thing where I'm talking. There was like 25 people there yeah. in his uh, in his wife's faux fur shop. I know. Wow. That's Tommy's favorite band, right? Uh, Smashing Pumpkins b- band, yes. Okay. I mean, because I was like his famous, like overall performer would be Aladdin for right. sure. Okay, um, but it's funny that at the Super Bowl party at my place, we were talking. I didn't realize the level of Tommy's fandom for nineties. Yeah, it's similar to Corinth. He was at a exactly. garbage concert this week. I mean, not garbage. We've been to garbage. He was at Bush. a fuck Bush concert yeah. this Whoa. week. I was about it. He left me a, vo- <laughs> a voice note. He goes, days. "I'm at a Bush concert with Grant because it's 1994." Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I would have loved to go 90s. to a Bush concert just because Gavin Ross so yeah. hot he is hot holy mm, shit still, um, he can still get it but uh yeah that's like that's funny because that's just like that like something that i've been processing and i mean i don't feel like i'm like i i, I kind of i think he realized like how fucking stunned i was because <laughs> he asked me like i really like to never be controlling over other people's actions because i want I'm, I'm like i just want you to make the right decision right without me controlling it but it, and again like i i it's a it's not like you know he didn't you know, Frank hurt me, but he didn't hurt. Fr- the reason Frank hurt me was like my own, you know, st- stuff. I mean, obviously he could have broken up with me in a smoother way, but we were, you know, we were a lot younger. Yeah. I don't, I really don't hold anything against him. I've never had any um, bad, after we cut the dust kind of settled, I never yeah. had any bad interactions with him. That's good. Uh, but and again, Wild. again, like, I mean, it, to, to create an entire podcast about it, he, yeah. he's really, he, he could have really walking on thin ice. He could have really been a, a lot meaner about this than he ever has. He's never been mean at all. Um, but that's, uh, that just made me laugh. That's funny. <laughs> so come see us in Ireland, guys. Yay. <laughs> Top of the morning. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I mean, it's been a crazy, crazy two weeks. I haven't, like, I haven't had like a moment, uh, to breathe, but it's, it was nice getting back on the road doing a, like long hours, um, you know, kind of talking to people. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm exhausted. I sleep, slept all day yesterday. Nice. Um, yeah, but overall, it's been fun, productive. Good. I feel like fe- January was amazing. February has kind of like a weird vibe in the always. air. Yeah, yeah. I thought you loved February. Well, though. I like my, I like it because it's my birthday month, but it's always a weird month. Like, and then, well, also too, like the day after your birthday is so depressing. <laughs> oh, really? Because <laughs> everyone's so nice to you. Sure. You hear from <laughs> people you haven't one heard day. of. for Yeah, you hear from people you haven't heard of in a while. And I was thinking to myself before my birthday, I'm like, man, if I, I want the confidence of my birthday day every day of the year. Right. But then I realize it's because people mail me flowers. Sure. People fuck it, you know what I mean? And then and then I remember, like, I'm not talking to my mom and dad, which is good. I'm so glad I'm not. But like, it's just so it's like the 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 coming down off of the. Hey, Christina, oh, my God, you're great. Oh, this is great. I'm like, thank you so much. And then the next day you're like, oh. It's like a come down from ecstasy, basically. Yes, and I did do after. ecstasy. Yeah, I was like, so which is I, awesome. And I actually don't have a come down from that. I don't either, but uh, many people kind of, you know, same as, describe yeah. that. Or, I mean, the same as alcohol or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I actually feel a lot of relief the day after my birthday because uh, by the end of the, my birthday day, I'm always like, all right, this is it's done. It's too much. I've eaten too much. Oh, my God. I've, I've eaten like shit. It's just, it's just, we've reached, I've reached my limit of interaction with human beings. Right. Right. Um, right. But, but yeah, so that and then Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day was great. Good. Yeah, it was good. Uh, my my boyfriend was sick, so we couldn't really do much. We went for a walk outside, but um, uh, <laughs> COVID yeah, he, romance. He wore he wore a mask. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. I like doing kitschy shit for Valentine's Day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like dumb shit. Yeah, I love dumb little presents from CVS. You know? Yeah. Um, so that was really fun. I saw. Uh, oh my god, I saw the whale last night. 
With was Fred, it I heard good? of Brendan Fraser. I love oh, Brendan Fraser. Oh, right, 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 right. Gorgeous right. movie. So, boy, did it make you think about shit that you were not comfortable thinking about. But, like, um, what kinds of things? Uh, obesity. And, but, like, what does that mean? <laughs> no, oh, really? No, but, like, somebody literally eating themselves to death. Yeah, oh, I think right. about that a lot, actually. Um, but you, I love those overeating shows. I can't watch them, man. Because uh, yeah. it's like, like somebody's pain and trauma is yeah. just you're being well, born. Well, no, but that's because, but that's why, you know, everyone gets so mad at me that I'm fat phobic and I go, we're, we're just letting someone just be fucking die in their own mental illness. No, right. Totally. Yeah. And it's I think hard it's to watch someone like, wildly irresponsible. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're not watching them literally deteriorate, but you're watching them like, yeah. you know, put more pressure on their heart, like morbid. Sure. Brandon Fraser's character was morbidly obese. Yep. Uh, I got to say, though, too, um, every time a play is turned into a movie, it's always fucking good. I mean, the dialogue is just so juicy. Uh. Um Sadie Sink uh, from uh, Stranger Things on Netflix played his daughter. It was a lot of like that. That's the other thing with the parent thing. Like this, he, he was Sadie Sink's dad, and they lost touch for reasons that when you see the movie, you'll you'll understand. Um, and he just wanted to be back in her life so much. Uh. And I'm like, oh, isn't that nice that a parent's like love you like that? So I got a little bit like, Meh, and then that, it only lasted an hour. Um, but yeah, that movie was fucking great. I love going to the movies. It just transports you to other worlds. It's just so hard to carve out like three hours no, it's on not. a Saturday Two. to be Don't go on a Saturday. completely depressed. Because well, it's a I super like depressing it. movie, right? Uh, uh, I like to go on weeknights when no one's there. It's much more It's much more enjoyable. Like I'll go on like a Tuesday night. Yeah. But it's, I just meant more the mindset. Well, like it, knowing that the Darren Aronofsky's movies always right. make me feel horrible. So you know? for sure, mm. this wasn't as Aronofsky as his previous movies okay. were, which I really appreciated. Um, but this this movie made you think. It makes you think about your own life in a way that I, I really enjoyed. I kind of had some like sadness lingering in me that I kind of wanted to just get out through this story. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. Um, but it's a great movie. I do recommend seeing it. The ending was beautiful. Oh my, Brendan Fraser... It, what a vulnerable motherfucker on he's screen! He's an awesome actor. Oh my, that's God. interesting because you don't think of that. Like I don't think, I think when you George think, of the Jungle, usually, yeah, exactly. But, no, but he's, you this think is of the his, thing. His silliness. Do you, do you know his story? No. Why he like disappeared for a while? Wait, no. I was reading about it. Can you remind me? So I do. Allegedly, I, the the the, yeah. the he just kind of went away. He first off, he was doing all these crazy stunts on those mummy movies, and his oh, body right. started getting fucked up because uh, he was like he was taking hard falls and like he would break some shit and he would so he, his body was breaking down, but then. Something happened in one of the years when he was starting, his career was starting to cool off a little bit, where one of the, I don't remember if it was the president of the uh, Hollywood Foreign Press or someone high up, though, in the Hollywood Foreign Press groped him at a, oh, right. at a party, at like an A event. guy or a girl? A guy. Like an, some older man came up Ew. and just grabbed his dick. Oh, my God. And, and he, it like... It, and he was going through a divorce too. Like there's a lot oh, of stuff going on. Very vulnerable. But he just kind of like he just kind of like made the choice to dial it back. Wow. Because he just wasn't super comfortable. Yeah. But I can he, only imagine just being in Hollywood that long. How much it must eat at your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. And, but he has such a great reputation as like everybody in the industry seems to love him. And His he's performance. Great, super talented. I don't know if you've ever watched Doom Patrol no. on HBO Max. It's like a pseudo superhero show, but it's like not really a superhero show. Huh. He plays a robot. Uh, it's hard to explain. You know weird facts. I it, love it. It's just I, I love the show. It's so fucking good. And he He's so fucking good in it. Really? Oh, he's so good. It's yeah. just like you forget when, when an actor that's that talented goes away for a little bit and then comes back. You're just yeah. like, man, like, I, why am I not seeing more of this guy? Right. You know, right. Or this woman or whatever. He, you know? I mean, he deserves the Oscar for this movie. It was so, like the, he gave mm. looks to his daughter. It, there was like a couple moments where he just looked at her and you just saw the pain and you're yeah. like, holy fucking shit. It's wild. This movie is so good. Oh, so good. And there's only six performers in it the whole time. Like, yeah. and it's, nice. it's it was a play so it's very limited locations there was one location um yeah and the ending was very satisfying and very beautiful so i highly recommend you go see that movie hmm. i love movies they're the best oh uh, and then there's this there's this uh I, so i always save you know when stuff uh kind of stands out to me on guys we've, uh, on oh Instagram. i read that on without a country yeah oh yeah, yeah, is yeah. it okay if i read i yeah, just it's, yeah, yeah so uh it's this article um What's what uh what what magazine is this from or what I don't know. Is it oh, Washington New Post. Yeah. Washington Post. It's like a major uh teen girls engulfed in violence and trauma CDC finds. Nearly one in three high school girls reported in twenty twenty one that they seriously considered suicide, Oof. up nearly sixty percent from a decade ago, according to new findings from the C Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Almost fifteen percent of teens girls said they were forced to have sex. 
15%. And those are the only ones that like remembered it and were truthful about it. A lot of times when something traumatic like that happens, your brain goes, that didn't happen. An increase of 27% over two years. And the first increase uh, since the CDC began tracking it. Almost three in five teenage girls reported feeling so persistently sad or hopeless almost every day for at least two weeks in a row during the previous year that they stopped regular activities uh, a figure that was double the share of boys in the highest uh, and the highest in a decade cdc data showed if you know uh, if you think about every 10 teen girls that you know at least one and possibly more has been raped and that is the highest level we've ever seen said kathleen ether a director of the cdc's division of adolescence and school health who said that the rise of sexual violence almost certainly contributed to the glaring spike of depressive symptoms. We are really alarmed, she said. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, and questioning students were significantly more likely to experience violence, including rape, than their heterosexual peers. They were almost more likely to be electronically bullied and to uh, report persistent sadness or hopelessness. 22% had attempted suicide during the year. The survey did not have a question about uh, gender identity, so the analysis did not include trans students. Future versions of the survey are expected to include that question. Um, that that's that's fucking that's wild. I mean, it doesn't and it but it, and the, the sadder part is it doesn't surprise me because the rise of social media and the comparing that you do and these fuck sure. I think about this all the time. If I had those fucking Instagram and Snapchat filters when I was 16, I don't I don't know what that would have done to my self-esteem because my self-esteem was so rocky, like so rocky. And I didn't know what was happening in my life until like a decade later. And so I just think about like and I, I'm curious, like we haven't really asked this in, in a while, but like do t I don't know. Do t are you a teenager? Do you listen to the show? Are you a teenage girl? Like I would be I would be interested in hearing from you um, like what what your day to day life is like and what what factors uh, affect how you feel about yourself? Because I'm like, there's got to be. OK, so this these statistics are very glaring. What can we do about it? You know, and I feel like. You know, guys, we fucked. We really, we're really pushing for the past 10 years of like, get right with yourself first. Get to know yourself before you jump into a relationship because then from there, you know, whatever life throws your way, it might be a cheating spouse. It might be, you know, the death of somebody that you love very dear. Like, bad things will happen to you in your life. But if you know yourself and you have, you know, self esteem intact, you know, you kind of can, it's like a safety helmet in a way. Well, but, yeah, it's not like, it's not like, like, you know, having a good life is not that bad. Things don't happen it's that right. you know how to handle them when they do bad yeah. things will continuously happen that's part of life yeah <laughs> and our ability to handle bad things like we need to make sure that we're constantly working on that i mean i fucking work on it almost every goddamn day uh because you know it's uh, you know when you're feeling great it's gonna go away and when you're feeling like ass and you want to die it's gonna go away you know yeah well there's also a couple of variables that they talk about in, uh, when you get later in that article like number one the statistics are very glaring for women but there was a question whether or not uh, men were being as honest like right. especially young men were being honest in their feelings yeah um with the feedback so that's why it might have skewed a little bit more um like intense for the females and then also something that i was thinking uh, as far as the force to have sex i think we're thinking about sexual assault and rape in a lot different ways now yeah. so maybe like interactions that previously women would have thought like were okay or were just something like the way sex is i think now it's more like clear um and so they might be uh like checking yes to you know uh coerced sexual interactions that uh, not not that necessarily more happening but we're clearer on what, what they are sexual interaction is so right. I, yeah no because i was like you know i always try to think like why is this so but i mean the comparison is definitely a big part of it and like i follow a lot of like millennial you know joke accounts and they often show like home videos of women um, who are currently in their 30s, what we were acting like as teenagers and mm. how <laughs> kind of like, you know, not fuckable we looked, which is a good thing. So not fuckable. And then, it, and then it goes to like, you know, young people now doing TikTok dances and how like sexy fuckable they, they look. Yeah. look. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just as it, it's nice to have a glow up as people say, yeah. but it's also like, if you look that fuckable when you're 16 and that's you care that much about being aesthetically attractive, like where do you go from there? Right. Well, the power that comes from that when you for when you're a teenage girl and you first realize you have like a power, especially for older men, it feels uh, as, and if your self-esteem isn't intact, especially it feels intoxicating and you don't know what to do with it. And you're like, I don't. Uh, uh. that's the other thing. If I had fucking TikTok when I was a teenager, my titties would be at like I would be fucking 
oh, oh, probably I would have been overtly sexual in a, at a, during a time where I wasn't really ready for that. You know, I just felt like, ooh, this is like a little power trip or this is like, I used to go to the mall when I was 15, 16, 17 by myself, wear like low rise jeans and my titties were out. And I just would like put my headphones in and walk the mall and feel like hot. <laughs> that, and that, I'm like, could you imagine if 16 year old Christina had TikTok with all these goddamn dance trends? Yeah, Woo! you you would have been sex trapped. I would have been. Right I, yeah, I would have been kidnapped. So, well, it's also interesting. I, I also think there's probably something where, like, if you're hitting sexuality that early, that also means to me that you're probably aging out of it earlier. Like mm. you're become like you're you feel like you're aging faster than you are. So it's like, oh, if you start to like lose value in your sexuality at like 25. Oh, God. The yeah. fuck is happening? Your prime years are in your 30s. So, yeah, don't. Oof, gosh. Yeah. Mm. So it it's all very dangerous territory. But controllable, yeah, controllable. We can we we control our own. Yeah, destinies. but if you're a teenage girl and you listen to the show, we would love to hear from you. Sorry about last night show at gmail.com. I'm just curious. Like, yeah, there was what? a lot of w women in Toronto who were like, "I've been listening to you since I was like 14 or 15," and yeah. I and I always go, "Are, are things things that turn out you okay? Good? You good, girl?" <laughs> we all so. said yes. Yeah. So that's I, good. I was like, "I'm basically your mother." Yeah, <laughs> I raised you. That's what I say when girls say that to me. I'm like, I raised you. You are my daughter, um, guys. Our guest. We're so excited to have him on. It's been a minute. We've been wanting to have this guest on for a long time. He is a sensational stand up comedian. He has a stand up special and a sketch uh, special, Gillian Keeves, on YouTube that you should absolutely watch. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show Shane, Shane Gillis. Gillis. Hey, Shane. It's not you. We're here with stand up comedian <laughs> Shane Gillis. Hey. Oh, wow. Long awaited. Yeah. This is great. Thank you so much for doing this, even though, um, you, you know, you might get trolled. Um, <laughs> no, you will be fine. We're, we're, we're happy we're that you're here. Um, all right. So let's talk about you're in a two year relationship. Oh, yeah. Ooh. We're just jumping right into it. Yeah, we don't need to know right. the backstory. Right. Girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. No, this is great because this is like a long term girlfriend for a male comedian. Obviously, she's not a comic and that's why it's lasted. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you guys met. We've met her once. Yeah. Very lovely. You have to keep her hidden. Right. Well, yeah, I try for real. <laughs> no, I mean, that's. I try very hard. It's important. I, I appreciate and respect the, the comedians yeah. who are really well known, especially for being bad boys. And oh, bad boys? Yeah, no. They mm. protect their girlfriends. It's nice. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's necessary. Yeah. What do you protect? Her front, protecting her. I've front. had dudes are like, like I had a guy like email my ex from like five years ago. Holy he found shit. her school that she worked at. Oh, found it in the directory and emailed her like she's a teacher. He emailed her and was like, "You fucking bitch, you blew uh, it. Why'd you leave Shane?" Oh like, my crazy god! Email was it something that you had talked about being hurt about that breakup? Yeah, like when it happened five right. years ago when ten people were listening to my podcast. <laughs> right, right, yeah. yeah. Remember when uh, you were like, "No one's gonna listen to this no shit." No one's ever gonna listen. To this. Yeah, they do. Fuck, it's on CNN. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he was just she. He was trying to have your back, but that that's the problem when fans try to have your back. You're like, that's not. It's vicious. It, yeah. it, it, it doesn't. You're like, this is not really helping. It's actually making things way yeah, worse. It was usually. Weird. Yeah. Did she call you? She and was texted like, me. Hey, and was dude. like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And I hadn't talked to her in years. Wow. And I was like, damn. Was there a little part I'm of you so that was sorry. excited that you heard from her again? No. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, yeah. Of course. Like, I'm, we're, I'm fine with her. I don't have a yeah, problem with yeah. her. But it was like, you're not trying to rehash anything. Yeah. Though. I just felt bad because. I, then it looked like I just talked about right. it. Right. Uh -huh. Like recently. I was right, like, right. no, this guy's listening to an episode from four years ago. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. I'm yeah. like, sad. Oh, had she actually <laughs> done anything that was like, like that, that warranted a being, breakup? No, had she done anything like no. it, cruel in, during the Not, breakup? Nothing. <laughs> you were just a human I, I being moved, going through a breakup. No, I moved to New York. We lived together. And uh, I left. So you left and then she said, fuck she no. Like, we so, can't yeah, this, so it just uh, what a made bitch. sense. Yeah, she was what a bitch. totally correct. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I just can't break up with people. Yeah, you were wow. just sad because so like, you wanted to have everything. Somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did you, th Shane, what did you think was going to happen when you left the apartment that you cohabitated in with yeah. your girlfriend and, and then started hardcore pursuing your dreams alone in New York? I had a feeling. Because <laughs> she did not want to live in New York at all. Really? Yeah. What was yeah, her, her, like, thoughts on that? She's from where I'm from, so where, Philly, Mechanicsburg. right? Oh, Mechanicsburg. No, middle, yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. So like Philly was too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, said yeah. Mechanicsburg or bust. Yeah. 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 But Amish wasn't there baby. something in you that was like, I want more for myself in my career than well, I yeah. can get out of there? And but had you discussed that? No. I it just, feels like a weird no, situation to have gotten yourself crazy. into. Like literally one day, I got fired from my job in Harrisburg. 
And I was like, I'm just going to move. I'm going to move to Philly. Okay. And I like told her, I was like, I got an apartment in Philadelphia. Oh, you you just got like, an apartment and let her know. Yeah, Seems yeah, to be a oh, lack of communication shit. in this yeah, relationship. Yeah, I wasn't good at that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. She, she stuck with it though for a while. And I was like, so the difference now is like, I'll go home, I'll go back to my apartment. My girlfriend and I live together and I'll like play Xbox. If I'm not doing stand up, I'll just lay down. <laughs> Like, well, nice. I'm not doing shit. Okay. Yeah, I'm on the road every fucking week. Yeah. If I'm home, like I'm home today for one day. Wow. And then I got to go to Texas Fuck. tomorrow. Yeah, thanks. I, get, I was in Florida yesterday. I tricked Jesus. you into coming. Yeah, yeah. You got <laughs> me. You got me him. pretty good. <laughs> she got me like a month ago. I was drunk. I was like, all right, yeah, I'll do it. I'll Corner do it. Yeah, I reverse yeah, bullied yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. I was like, who the fuck do you think <laughs> yeah, you are? You're not going to I've fucking known you since <laughs> Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you and you have uh, Pennsylvania parents. You yes. have Pennsylvania Fox News parents. Well, dad. just just My your dad. Yeah. So your mom didn't get converted. No. So I I love your bit about Fox News dad versus Fox News mom because I have a Fox News mom and Fox a Fox News, News dad. Wild. But Fox News mom, <laughs> she'd be showing up on January sixth. Oh, nice. And I'm finding out like months later. I'm like, damn. You wait, your mom went. She went to the speech. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Ah, I don't know, man. I will say this. You're not. It does fire me up. It does make me happy. <laughs> like when I find out somebody went, I'm like, oh, yo, that's wild. That's wild. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. But yeah, Fox News but, dads are like, yeah, they're harmless. I hate to cut you off, but can you imagine if your dad went to like the women's march? Oh, God. Like, oh, no. my oh, God. I'd be like, so oh, my dad's a rapist. Yeah, yeah my dad's a rapist. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that my, my dad was a, a rapist. rapist. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you would drive me nuts when men would show up at the women's march. I would be like, the only man allowed was my dog. I was, yeah. he, he marched the whole time with a dick. But did you ever consider it. marching? Fucking not even <laughs> once. It's untrustworthy. It's untrustworthy. I was mad, I was mad about that there was a march. Yeah. Why? Why were you mad, Shane? Lame, dude. <laughs> Well, we got to get our message out what? somehow. What do you recommend we do? Yes. Nothing. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck yeah, up. Right. I can't wait to the, the comments from our fans yeah, on this yeah, one. Yeah. This is going to be great. Yeah, our fans are going to be bullying your fans in the comment section. And it's going to be, Ooh. hey, it's going to be great for our algorithm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of interactions. Wow. Um, wow. 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 Okay. So we should shut up. Is that... No. What, so wait, like, I mean, how do you, do you partake in feminism any, anyway? Because I agree with you. <laughs> That's I, just a weird question to ask Shane Gillis. I just, like, I <laughs> can't I even, partake? but I feel like sometimes it's the unexpected people. Because like you, I mean, I don't, I've never seen you do anything terrible to a woman. Doesn't mean it doesn't, no. ha it hasn't happened. But I think it's like some, some, yeah. sometimes these like outward shows are the, are these are the evilest people. Yeah. 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 That's For why sure. I don't trust them because yeah. I think time and time again it's revealed that those are the because the, exactly it's like showy. No one really does that. Yeah. yeah, show don't tell. Yeah, I don't know. I guess is your girlfriend a feminist? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is she I like mean, an anti-feminist? What, do you, mean? what feminist? do you mean by feminist? Like, yeah, like, like, does she like care about women's rights, socially active, that kind of a thing? Like, what women's rights? The right to an abortion safely, um, you know, the right to, to vote, pay. to drive, voting. We, I'm pretty sure drive. it's not going to be taken away, but mm. she doesn't drive. <laughs> Literally, uh, yeah, she's so, bad at it. Yeah, because she's a woman. Wait, is she a native New Yorker? No, she's from Iowa. Oh wow, you mm. think you'd be driving a truck by like twelve yeah. there? Yeah. How did That's... you meet her? Instagram. She DM'd you. I DM'd her. She followed me though. Oh, so and I was like, "Oh, there's a hot lady following me." Yeah. <laughs> and does that happen rarely within your fan base? At the time, yeah, a couple years ago, yes. No, there, there was a good year. Now it's like you... hot wives and girlfriends of dudes that listen to Rogan. Oh, right, right, so right. So now right. I get those people. Yeah, Are those people trying to cheat on their husbands and no. boyfriends? No, no, never. Are you just saying that to because you want to maintain your fan base? No, I'm serious. <laughs> Literally never. <laughs> It's always like if, really? I see a hot Never? Girl, if a hot girl DMs me, yeah. I'll see it and it'll be like, my husband and I are big fans or my boyfriend and I are big fans. That's an invite it's for never, a three way. No one's invited me to a three way. <laughs> I know, but had you continued the conversation with them? No. Okay. Yeah. So I, they might be sniffing around for a or it's usually No, it's usually like a girl's like, hey, could you do a cameo basically? Right. Uh, you sent my boyfriend a video wishing him a happy birthday, birthday or something. Mm, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you met your your girlfriend was hot. She wasn't your girlfriend at the time. She DM'd you. She's hot. You see this? It's not she happening. Followed me. I DM'd yeah. her. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You DM her. Yeah. And then what do you say? What's your opening line? It's pretty embarrassing, but she was posting Perfect. about uh, what book she should read. 
it was like on our Instagram story. I was hammered in my hotel, and it was like it's, one of them was like a biography of Ulysses S. Grant. Wow, she can't like, drive, but she can read. And I was like, Grant, she... I love Ulysses S. Grant. <laughs> and then we just started talking. So you drunk said, "I love Ulysses yes. S. Grant." Yes. Did you I have any you, like follow up information about what? I know a lot about Ulysses. Oh, you S. Grant. so you oh you genuinely that, do? Yeah, you I read, read that, that biography. Yeah. Wow. So did it genuinely make you more attracted to her that she was reading that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm always interested, like, because it's always any like male d- perspective on a love story always starts with just like a song. She was hot. <laughs> Dudes be loving she wars and presidents. <laughs> yeah. yeah, guys. I thought that was like unique to the guys that I've dated, and then you realize, oh no, it's like every guy loves wars and presidents. Can I just ask? What was it? The Charnoff uh, doc, uh, book? Oh my god, uh, we just honestly, lost all our female big one? Honestly, I don't know. Right. It wasn't a big one. Okay, guys. I think hers. It was a little dainty I read girl a little book. Tiny one. Okay, it was Ulysses S. Grant for girls. <laughs> I read his fucking, it's only 10 pages. I read his Wikipedia. I read half his Wikipedia. Wow. Got it. All right. <laughs> what was That's his legacy? Uh, now they say he was a drunk, but nice. he was a drunk guy that won the Civil War. That's pretty, pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, okay. Good so you're DMing, yeah. you're drunk. How does it escalate from here? Uh, Is she in Iowa she, at this no, time? No, she lived in D.C. Okay. okay. And so we just figured out a time for her to come up. She, oh, you know what? Her sister lives in New York, so she was like, I'm visiting my sister. Oh, perfect. And I was like, all right, well, let's go get dinner. How long had you talked before you decided on that? I think a couple months. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And Just like, kind of occasional DMing. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. That's enough. That's like massaging it enough that like yeah. a stay. That like a date's reasonable. Yeah. Did yeah. you keep thinking of her during this time period? Did you, could... Yeah. I guess, yeah. I'm, I'm. This is. This is. I'm not trying to get you in trouble with your girlfriend. I try so hard to keep her out of everything. Yeah. No. I'm just. I'm just. <laughs> I'm just interested on like a male comic or a game. A on game. Wow. yeah. How'd you do it? On when is the time when men decide like this is the girl for me? That's what I'm. And you give that's up conceptually what I'm interested in. And you give up single life for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like the hunt. You give up the hunt. I'm usually in a relationship. Okay, your relationship. Guy. Yeah, you are yeah. actually. Yeah, almost always. Wow. What you and love what, love? <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> Do you love love? I like that yeah, you think course. that like part of your image is that you can't like love. No, no, no. I just I, <laughs> no, no, no. Love's great. What it's is it about best. relationships that you like? The safety, the comfort, the companionship? Yeah, maybe. I uh <laughs> think all those. I love all your emotional love. depths. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What do you guys like about relationships? Nothing. Safety. That's why. Really? Yeah, that's why I, I kind of opt. I'm kind of done with them as a mm. thing. I love doing shit with people. I just love yeah. going on trips, road trips, all of it. Yeah. Sex. This is great. I do too. And then I was like, oh, I could just be a comic, and then I can go on all the road trips I want with mm. other people who yeah. aren't annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like road life? Do you think it's lonely? Uh, no, I bring my friends. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. To open a feature for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nice. So for a while I wasn't. And yeah, that gets that can get pretty bleak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been times where you, like I've been on the road and like gotten dumped. Mm. You're just in a fucking oh, you're just God. In a hotel in fucking Albany. Really? Oh, Who? Like, God, that's oh. terrible. How, How long suicidal. were you dating a woman that she was de- that she couldn't make time to dump you in person? Was this short? She was young. It was pretty. Yeah. It was What's, like a newer relationship. Oh, okay. What's like the biggest age difference you've had in a relationship? Um, God, I don't know how old I, I, that was probably a couple years. I was probably like eight years older than her. Oh, okay. She was probably like 22. I was like 30. Is that the one I met at the cellar? Probably. Okay. Like very early. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah the yeah, first yeah. time I was ever at the cellar, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, interesting. And so what it was, was it like the lack of understanding of how much time you'll be away as a comic? Was that what broke the relationship? Yeah, and also she was fucking 22. It's yeah. tough to be in a relationship. <laughs> like, it is, she's yeah. like a hot 22-year-old. Right. It right. is, but girls hot. usually seem like more willing to do it because we are socialized that it's the most important thing to be in a relationship when we're heterosexual. And it, like that it brings value to our lives in a way that men aren't socialized until they're older. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I think like a man who's single for his whole life, I think maybe lacks societal value, but not until like, you can go into like 45 as mm-hmm. a bachelor yeah. and be completely respected by society. Oh yeah. What what's hard about dating a twenty two year old is are they like I just want to dance like that yeah, kind of yeah, thing yeah, yeah. stuff okay. like that. And yeah. You didn't want to dance? Yeah. No, I'm not much of a dancer. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah, I had a joke about dating a young, tw- a hot twenty two year old was like trying to like pet a cat. 
yeah. it's like you're like it's like oh things are going well and then yeah. just out of nowhere it's like oh, oh yeah where are you going no 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 it's climbing things up were your fine. back with its claws things were fine but what can yeah. so what like were you, were you just attracted to her because she was hot or was there something personality wise that you're like this I, this could be the one I yeah I think she was just hot okay yeah. so this what, is a lot <laughs> just like what's going through your, but what's going <laughs> I asked you what, what's going through your mind though when you're going from making someone your not girlfriend to making them your girlfriend I kind of just go along <laughs> It's usually up to the girl, honestly. <laughs> you don't lead the charge. No. You're like, hey, I want to, yeah. I want to, I want to nail this down. the woman just be like, let's go on a date again. I'm like, all right. Oh wow, yeah, then, you're yeah. along for the ride. Yeah. So how Sick. bad would a woman have to be to make you not interested anymore? Great question. <laughs> Pretty bad, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever That's had like a great. dating disaster? Like, have you ever dated somebody that you're like, Ugh, like they're nuts or they're? Uh, uh, yeah, have you ever dumped someone? Yeah, it's it's a weird thing I've done, like where I've gotten dumped, okay, and worked hard to get back together, and then, and then I dumped them for ego purposes, or then you realize when you're back together that oh, yes. I see why you dumped me because this wasn't working. Yes, uh, it's yeah. That. yeah, 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 for sure. The game is fun though, the back and forth little yeah. dance that you and do. And then as soon as we break up, I'm like, I love you so much. I need you back. <laughs> yeah. I fucking love you, baby. I was doing nothing to keep the relationship going. <laughs> Just playing Xbox. And then yeah, and then it's like I need you back, and then you get back, and you're like, oh, I'm pathetic. <laughs> Well, that's yeah. just a, that's like I a lost all respect for myself. Yeah. That's just pure avoidant attachment, though. Like that's like you're not you're not really invested until you're the you lose the person. That's like textbook avoidant. Have you ever been to therapy, Shane? Yeah, once I didn't like it that much. One time, literally one singular time. I went no, I, I went once when I was young. Okay, and they what? tried to put me on like antidepressants, and I was oh like, wow, no. looking queer, You're sad I'm boy. Good. I was sad at You're one sad point, boy. and I said no. And then he was like, "What do you want to do with your life?" And I was like, "I want to do stand up comedy." Yeah, and he was like, "Well, no, for real." Like you, I that. hate when people mm. say that. And I was like, "Oh, I'm leaving." Yeah, yeah. fuck what that. Fuck? I was Ew. like, that was like twenty. It was uh, crazy. Did your parents support your dreams? Uh, yeah. Good. Yeah, they have. My dad was getting a little, they were getting close to being like, what are you doing with your life? Yeah, yeah. Well, why were you sad, like, to the point where a therapist was recommending antidepressants? Or were you sad? They were just, I was like, pretty making fucking it up. depressed, yeah. For I had, any like, reason? I'd, like, quit football oh. in college. Just, oh, you were college football. Yeah. And mm. then I just, as soon as I quit football, I just drank and stopped going to class. So I got, like, kicked out of school. <laughs> Fuck. I was back in my parents' house. Ah, like, damn. Gained, gained, like, 50 pounds uh, from yeah. beer. <laughs> Why'd you quit? Why'd you quit football? It was hard. And you <laughs> <laughs> It was really hard. What an incredible... Also, it was hard and I sucked. I, uh, <laughs> but then how did you make it to college football if you sucked? Was it like well, just a sucky school? No, you got to if you gotta work really hard to be good at college football. You have to get up like at butt ass you early, right? You got to work so hard. A guy, like I wasn't talented enough to like play early. Uh -huh. So right. I would have had to have like worked very hard for like three years to start to play one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was in year one just like, oh, this is never going to happen. You just didn't love it enough? No. Did yeah. you get hit in the head about like were you... A lot, yeah. Yeah, that's so, okay. So I was thinking about that when oh, we were watching definitely. the Super Bowl. Like, the, I don't think NFL shit will, NFL will never dissolve. It'll never go away. It makes too much money. But like, you're just watching grown men get punched in the head over and over again. Yeah, but it's their body, their choice. For sure, it is their body, their choice. But I'm like, damn. It's not their body, their choice when they hit their wives. Yeah, when they though, beat the Shane. crap out of their families. I think they're making a choice. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, not the, I'm well, saying the, the wife isn't making the choice, though. Is she? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> head was in I've the seen way. a couple videos. <laughs> head was she was like, being a bitch. It's like some of those women made a choice. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Ooh, all right, never mind. Um, did you no, get, keep going with that? My bit. bad. My bad. That's no, actually no, gonna be no. the clip that we're gonna share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, so you, you, you were like the 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 recruits basically for your college football team, right? Like you didn't, you never started yeah. in the games, and you were still oh, getting no. fucking punched in the head every day in practice. You That's just, insane. I just got destroyed. Oh my god. Because <laughs> everyone else was so good, I sucked. <laughs> Like when, I, when I went to quit, when I went to quit, I was talking to my, I played offensive line. I was talking to my coach after a practice or after a meeting. And I was like, I think I'm going to quit. And he was like, oh yeah. And I was like, I think I'm like the worst player on the team. Right. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, pretty close. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, all right, Thanks for the honesty. thank you. I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That honesty is good though. He was like the Simon Cowell of football coaches. He was exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And you were dead on. Your instincts were right. And yeah. also, yeah, your comedy career is going great. So good, good, good stuff. Worked Had you out. already been, so, so, but you, so you're in college, had, was that before or after you had said you were interested in pursuing comedy? It was before, but I always liked comedy. 
Mm. Yeah. But had you always thought of it as a career path or you just were a fan of it? I always, it was funny because when you're starting, you have no, I had no idea how you could do stand up. Same. From fucking Mechanicsburg. I was like, how, like, I would Google sure. I was Oh, like, God. Yeah. You I was got like, what did that. Will Ferrell do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Google it. Audition like, for how? SNL. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Done. <laughs> and uh, so then one day I was in the depressed phase. I was back home washing dishes at my friend's restaurant and oh, then wow. they were like hey one of the guys one of the chefs is doing a fucking open mic tonight and mm. i was like i Moment didn't know you destiny. could do that yeah. so in I, mechanicsburg like, yeah, PA? The Harrisburg comedy zone Shit. okay so i went and i watched there's like you know there's like nine people there in a bar yeah and i was watching it and i was like oh these guys suck i could do yeah. this yeah it's so much, i could do this it's so beneficial to see people who are bad at stand up because yeah. you're like oh i know exactly how you get better what the yeah. fuck are they doing that's yeah. great. So then I watched that for like two months and then I finally went on and just fucking bombed. Oh yeah. Like, really? I was going to ask if you were uh, one of those comics that were good right away. Uh, like no, Hannibal was, Burris was like good right away. I got good quick, yeah. but the first time I went, I was like, I don't have to write anything. I'm uh, just right. funny. I'll just go up and tell a story. Yeah. 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 Disaster. <laughs> I held the mic down at like my stomach. No one could hear no you. No one could hear me. Yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> how long, so how long did it take you to get good? I'd say, well, good as in like, Better than people at the Harrisburg Open Mic. Well, yeah, like two years. Oh, year. Okay, okay. Yeah. How did you? Was it, did you have trouble finding your voice? Like, like you know how some comics like click in. Usually, it takes like a you know a bunch of years doing it, and then all of a yeah. sudden you watch them and they clicked into something, and whatever the fuck they say works for like the rest of time. Yeah. Basically. Hopefully, I get there. I don't think I'm there yet. I still like even the one YouTube special I have. There's still parts I can see where I'm copying Louis. Oh, copying. right. Yeah. Like, there's definitely parts sure. in there where I'm like, that's obviously what I'm doing. Yeah. I, yeah. It, like, do you, yeah. Do you, were you copying because you just watched him too much? Like, yeah. Consumed? Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I was back before Chris Lee got like me too. And I was, I loved his podcast so much. He was so fucking funny. And I started listening to it and I started talking like him. I'm like, yeah. ah, I gotta stop. I gotta yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like too easy. But were you, were you doing him on, because I'm like, sometimes there was like a while when I didn't even, like, we're all doing someone. And, I didn't even know who I was doing until like two, th three years ago. I saw the old like uh, Janine Garofalo's like first TV half hour. And I was like, oh, you're doing Janine Garofalo. Yeah, yeah. Duh. Because <laughs> everyone always be like, oh, what are you doing? So Sarah Silverman. And I go, no, I'm not Sarah Silverman at all. She's yeah. very childlike. I'm not like that at all. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was like, oh, you're just doing it. Because it wasn't a conscious choice. It was just like something yeah. that had entered my brain. Was that for you and Louie? Or were you like, I want to be like better than Louie? No, I would like, I mean, I still do. I wear like jeans and a black t-shirt. Yeah, crazy Louie. Like, <laughs> don't dye your hair red, yeah. but you don't look anything like no, Louie. You're, no. you know, your your stature is much larger. No, Louie's big, isn't he? No, I, I mean, pass like, him in hallways. When I see Louie, I don't, tall, I don't feel like he's, he's like taller. an like an overpowering presence. Like you're like a big guy. Like you're like like it's like a huge. You're fucking massive. No, <laughs> you're, you're taking it negatively because you have no. bad feelings about yourself. <laughs> but I was like, I'm saying it in a positive yeah. way. So stop yeah, trying to take up space. Reverse that. No. Um... I think having a powerful presence is uh, important and and great for comedy, especially or just any yeah. kind of like entertainment fame stuff. Be especially because most celebrities are pretty petite when yeah. you meet them in real life. You know, it was interesting at SNL. They were like, "Lauren likes big guys." Oh, like, when that's I was a weird listening. sentence to say. No, they were like, "Lauren likes, likes a big boy." Likes, yeah, he likes a nice. <laughs> likes like big, if you're tall, boys. if you're big, he likes it. Why? Yeah, because usually all the the female cast members are short, and so the camera like figuring out the the cinematography for the sketches, you got to like even everybody's heights out. Yeah, that's, it was that's just that's something surprising. they said. I don't know. Like Merv wow. Griffin, like people with big heads. <laughs> no, he did. I like that's why. <laughs> really? Yeah, weird. That's why Pat Sajak and Vanna White have nah, big so heads. Soder would have got it. Wow. So do yeah, I got SNL yeah. if he liked the big heads. No, yeah. no, no. Merv Griffin oh, yeah, is yeah, Wheel yeah. of Fortune. So, I mean, I don't know if oh, Soda right. was up for Pat Sajak. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been be a great, great host. He He'd actually would be, so be a good. fun host. Yeah. Stoned and fun. God, wearing a hoodie. Be <laughs> so, but what, any of the times that you were on the road when you weren't in relationships, did you ever have like weird, interesting sex or relationships with f female audience members? Female or, fans? Or bartenders from comedy clubs? Yeah, I've been more scared from female fans than I have been from male fans fans Corinne and I both and it's very interesting to to, to mm. yeah I've looked up with a, a couple but like That's has happened. there any like been any like uh, crazy stories one time there was an older lady that got me how old yeah how old? what's older yeah I whatever no guy says idea. older late 40s early, okay oh like, okay that yeah. is older yeah. good for you wait you're younger than me how old are you I'm 35 now. okay so you're 35 but it was back it was I was opening for soda it was several years ago so you were you 30 yet 
I was probably 30. Nice. She's yes. late 40s. So okay. Yeah. So it's like 15 plus year age gap. Right. Right. That. This is, yeah. That's great. But yeah, sometimes you get like anxiety or like performance anxiety, you know? This lady, she was just a old lady. She knew her way around. <laughs> late 40s is not an <laughs> old lady. Well, no, I mean, for me, it was. <laughs> Right, right, okay. right. And, a lot older. Uh, yeah. Yeah, older women with younger men, <laughs> I, hate this shit. I feel like I'm so glad you're here. Uh, their confidence is just very like, here it is. Yeah. What's going on? Take yeah. your dick out. Yeah, were you nice. scared? Were you, you were very no, comfortable at Totally AIDS? comfortable. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, have you ever had a woman uh, on the road like try to, to do something ridiculous to try to fuck you or uh, to get your attention? Hmm. So I feel like women with male comics specifically, like they're, when, when a woman wants to fuck you, You'll know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's been that. They'll just like DM you a nude and they're like, uh, I'm at your show. I'll come fuck you. <laughs> and you, <laughs> and your response that. is like, <laughs> you, you don't find anything weird about this. You just go, cool. I, us I okay. usually don't respond. Oh. But mm. you, I can see it. Leave them on red. Mm, yeah, yeah, which yeah. Which is, I guess, pretty mean. No, because it's not, you know. No one asked them to do that. Just because you're yeah. a guy doesn't mean, like, you don't, that's the unsolicited tip pick, you know? Yeah. You don't, uh, you, uh, maybe you're not in the mood for that. You're in the middle of playing video yeah. games. Yeah. I gotta play some Xbox. Well, I mean, there also is something about just coming on that strong that makes you question, like, what's, what's wrong with you? Going, yeah, like, <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, with especially you. when it's a woman. When a man comes True. on strong, it's like that's what they're supposed to do. I would question it for either. If if I get a nude in the first DM from a man or oh, a yeah. woman, I'm going, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong yeah. with you? I mean, a guy leading with a nude is intense. Happens. Yeah, it's yeah. A woman can do it because it'll work. Right. Well, that's why I was surprised that it hadn't like, yeah. worked on you. Um, He's just such a relationship guy. No, it's just also <laughs> no like... No titties in my fucking photo album. Yeah. Do you like think it's a catfish or something and you're going to show up? It's oh, gonna there's be like been a, those. There's been those. But wait, I've been like, oh, I'm not... A catfish where it's a guy no or a catfish where it's an uglier woman? Uh, I don't know. There's There's been times where like a girl will send nudes that's like super hot and I'm like, no way. Ah! <laughs> No chance. Oh, so it's just you being like a girl <laughs> yeah, that's hot yeah, wouldn't yeah, want to yeah. fuck me? No, like a girl that hot wouldn't do that. Would, would, oh, wouldn't send right. yeah. nudes. Okay, yeah. which I kind of agree. Like if they uh, like are perfect looking, like they don't need yeah. to. They don't need to do that. Although, like the confidence of a hot girl is very unique. It's very like when you're in your twenties and you're like, oh, I can do anything with this. Yeah, th with these tits. Um, they're right. Also, like yeah. self worth and like doesn't like choose the body that it's in. So you can True. have someone with a gorgeous Ooh, body who mm -hmm. doesn't have a lot of self-worth, who just thinks that their body is the most valuable thing that they have, so they use it like that. Yeah. True. Current. I like that we're bringing up things that you seemingly at 35 have just never, never thought even about. thought about. <laughs> That's why we're here, man. Just opening your mind. What's the deepest like thought that you've had about <laughs> a relationship or love? <laughs> Uh, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> trolling you. I'm truly curious, and I feel. I feel like you think take that us, we're trying take to take us on a tour inside to your make brain. you look uncool. No, I'm just thinking about my girlfriend listening to this. Oh, and oh. she's going to. Oh, well, that's fine. But then, yeah. what, don't you want to impress her with your the complexity of your emotions, your emotional depth? Um, yeah, but what do you mean? Like, I don't even understand the question. <laughs> I don't even, do, I can't even feel like, what's yours? What do you mean? I mean, like how, like how, like, what do you think about when you think about like, a, like do you believe in soulmates? Mm, no. Okay. I think I did when I was like fucking in college. Yeah. Okay. Like and your, my when you were a loser. My first serious girlfriend. Yeah. Right. I was right, like, right. oh my God, I love her so much. Yeah. yeah. And, this and then the next the girl I met, I was like, oh my oh, God, God, I love her, her so, so much. much. Yeah, yeah. Right. And that's, that's what's interesting to be about <clears throat> men. So like, there's no one that you thought about for an extended period of time, even when you had moved on to a new girlfriend, like it immediately, when you fall in love again, it immediately like erases the past kind of. Yeah, that does. It does it for me. That does typically happen. Yeah. Best way to get over someone is to get under someone else, Corinne. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's. Like, I mean it really works for me. It works, but you have to hit the same level of love that you hit previously. So if you can't yeah. hit that again, I mean it, sometimes it takes Boy, years. Your imagination's real good at making it up. Yeah, I was mm. like, I was like, I mean, there's just some, you know, some people. That, there's very few special people in the world, even though we've been now currently trained as a society that everyone's special. We all know that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> so. I just realized you were drinking coffee, by the way. I thought for sure you were drinking chocolate milk out of a straw. <laughs> and I was like, Aww. damn, that's fucking mental. Yeah. <laughs> this bitch is crazy. <laughs> Talk about societal norms. No, drinking chocolate milk. No, it's keto. Like, you're breaking a pretty bad one. It's keto coffee. <laughs> nice. Um, how often, like, what is your video game consumption like? Um, it sucks now because lately I've been like, 
I'm getting to the age where it's like too old. Is there for this. a cap to this? Yeah. yeah, like, I'm, like, yeah, yeah. I'm just sitting there trying to find catch that fucking dragon that it used to. Right. You know what I mean? It like used the to dopamine. Be the best, and now I'm just sitting there like yeah. I tried to play NHL before I came here. Yeah. Didn't do it. Wow. It doesn't do it for Didn't you anymore. It for me. You're talking about it like it's masturbation. Like it just you are, but hit in the same is. way. Well, and I was, I was going to ask did video game play, like, was it ever excessive and did it ever get in the, it, oh, yeah. it ever come between you and a girlfriend? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this what? girlfriend, does it come between? No. She knows. She, she did knows. you like she knows lay it how on. hard I work though? Right. Like so that's the thing. I was gonna say okay. that when I was living with that girl back home, I was I was doing fucking open mics. Yeah. And you making had time. zero money though. Yeah. And like so yeah, me sitting there on the couch for eight hours was kinda like Eight hours you could I wonder do. what this guy's gonna do with his life. But right. have you ever discussed yeah. it as, as a team, like what the future was going to look like for you together? Because it seems like you had you did you you stayed together for a long time. He's like team? What? Um, <laughs> like how long did you date? I'm fucked. Uh, oh, how long did I date that girl? I dated the, the that girl for like five years. All right. Oh, wow. So yeah. in that time, I would imagine yeah. that some talk of the future, yeah, would come up, and she never said like. During a fight, she'd be like, "And you play fucking games? Xbox?" And I'd be like, "You know, I love Xbox. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Don't talk about my Xbox. Don't talk about NCAA 2014. Wow. Oh, NCAA. The, there's a video game coming back." Okay. They stopped oh, wow. making NCAA. Maybe that'll get your. They stopped your making back. NCAA in 2014. Yeah. And it's going to come back in like a year. There and then is, I'm done. There is something rewarding. <laughs> I'm playing that till I die. Yeah. I don't, I don't allow like a, I would like a Nintendo console in my house because if they're, if, if I had a Nintendo console in my house, I don't know, man. I think yeah. I would get hooked back in because I could beat every fucking level with my eyes closed and it's so rewarding. It takes a while, but like, you know, yeah. feels good. And great. you like weed, right? Love weed. Yeah. Yeah. You could do that. Yeah. 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 I don't even like weed. I'm doing this sober. Wow. Sober gamer. Yeah. That's I like wild. sober gaming. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Is that your like um, decompress time? I think so. That's your me time? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. fine. I understand that. It just takes so long. Like women's decompress time isn't eight it's hours like, on the couch. Yeah. What is it? Like two hours, maybe watching like Penn Badgley and you. Oh, yeah. The fuck's so, that? It's a show Come on, Netflix, on Shane. but he's not doing nude scenes this season. It's so annoying. He's really? so hot. Well, he's after this, he's not like, I think he's not making out with women on camera anymore. Wow. He's done. Yeah. Who wow. is this guy? Penn Badgley. So he, he was, was originally Gossip on Gossip Girl. Now he's on You. It's like a murder show. One of the most popular shows mm. on he's Netflix. He's a hot guy who kills chicks. And oh, every girl's like, yes, he's honestly, not, yeah. He, he's not real life, though. It's scripted. Why are women like that? Why I don't like know. I like I a just, bad boy. I like bad boys. Yeah, but those aren't bad. That's like a terrible. That's like it's Hitler's like, a bad gotta, boy. Yeah. <laughs> saying, like, and Hitler was married. <laughs> Murdering yeah, people. Yeah. Hitler not had really. a wife. What do you mean not really? Uh, they, they didn't get married. They didn't officially get married? I thought Ava I think was they, his wife. They might have officially gotten married. I also I mean, like how that came off your tongue so quick. Like you just know, married, you know a lot, of, a lot of hard facts about Hitler. I know Hitler. so much about Hitler. <laughs> well, I've, I've watched a lot of documentaries <laughs> yeah. on YouTube about Hitler. It's very interesting to I see somebody he, come to power. He didn't get married until either, I think the night before they killed, killed themselves. Killed themselves? Yeah. Uh, so romantic. romantic. Yeah, kind of romantic. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> you think about it. Look at you. <laughs> there you go. You have some romance yeah. in you. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of lost. I, yeah, I don't have too much romance. What's the most romantic what? you've ever gotten? Yeah, you don't see, strike me as a romantic guy, but you know, everybody. Yeah, loves but then love. see, then when you're not romantic, if you're romantic once, it's like, oh man, he's what? he's great. Oh, so you're uh, setting yourself up yeah, for success. Yeah. Lower the so bar. if I do the bare minimum, it's going to be treated like what a hero. Yeah, wow. I think a lot of men <laughs> take this approach. I'm not doing it. I don't do anything consciously. That's good. Nice. I, it kind of Just annoys me when people through do. Life. Why? I think it's weird. Like when to consciously like, care? No, to consciously like I'm gonna do this to up my value for this person to like this. Oh, like, whoa. yeah, that's that. that's like manipulative. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I see it all the time. Like all these like in the manosphere where they're like, you need to assert dominance. You need to do this. Like it's right, just, like I don't know. Coaching like yeah. these dating guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, do you think about the relationships that you're in very much, or you just are in the moment with it? Uh, no, really... I mean I still think about it. Yeah, a lot, but. Do you think like these are the things I need to do like in in the next month or whatever to stay in, in this you know to keep oh, this no. relationship functioning? No. Okay, so like if if your girlfriend came to you with a complaint, what do you about how things are going in the relationship? How do you respond? Uh, I guess if I thought it was a valid complaint, okay, I would Make say, the all right, I'm going to work on that. And oh, then do you nice. actually? Yeah. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> well, depends what the I don't know. These are all very vague. Questions. Can you what well, can you give me an example of uh, something? A complaint, That's, Michael, is there like a, a um, common thing that women complain? Like, because I I feel like we all get similar complaints in relationships based on our yeah. personalities. Yeah. Like for me, I don't I'm not I don't talk enough. People don't, mm. which is wild, a wild complaint from a man. But anyway, so I don't talk enough, and then yeah, it is. and I get that one a lot. So what's one that you get a lot? Not in this relationship. Maybe I've worked on it, but okay. I usually with my girlfriend, I treat her like a friend. Oh, that's where, a big like, complaint. Yeah, yeah. Where, no, but I mean, like, <laughs> like tell make, a joke and elbow yeah. her, buddy. Like I'll make fun of them. I like that though. Yeah, that's some fun. Girls are that's right flirty. With it. That's like back and forth kind of yeah, like. Sometimes it's mean. Oh. Uh, sometimes. Well, well, if they're not comics, that's too, the thing. You know? though, that's the thing that when the girl, it seems to me like when the woman wants it to be mean. Yeah. Then it's mean. Then all of a sudden the jokes I tell are mean. Oh. Meanwhile, it depends the, on the whole day. relationship it's been funny. Right. And then when you decide like She's I don't like the way you're talking to me, it's like, right. And now it's like you've been mean to me this laughed, whole time. You've been laughing for you know however long yeah do yeah. are these people who roast you as well or are you is this a one ended roasting i'm <laughs> <laughs> it depends. I can take like a f okay joke, but yeah. if somebody like makes fun of me, joke. I usually come back as hard as I can. Yeah, absolutely. Which but like it gets fault, it gets fault. mean. Yeah. yeah. But so one of the fun things to me about a relationship. Friends, I do it to yeah. You just say fucked up things to each other. <laughs> and yeah. just see how far you can go. Yeah. You know, it's kind of fun. It's I think like, you just just kind of revealed though you like you can't take a joke on yourself. <laughs> That's what you basically just said. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm bad at that. Yeah. <laughs> But what is it about it? Because you feel like comedy is like the one place where you really have control, so you lose control when people use it on you? Uh, Jesus. Ooh. Um, okay, Freud. Yeah, I told you I don't like therapy. Uh, I'm not trying to say, I'm just trying to like, <laughs> I'm just truly, in, I'm very, very interested in how men's minds work. Yeah, and how, uh, like what, uh, how much a mental energy a man puts into their relationship, because it doesn't seem like it's a lot. You know, because we spend and so women much seem more. seem like they put too much into it, to be honest. Mm. Like, Yeah, like, for, like I always talk about like, so when you're a female comedian, especially as you start to get, you know, at, when you're past your 20s, you're spending so much more time with adult men than any woman in yeah. her mid 30s yeah. would. It's an unnatural amount of time, so it's, easier to spend that time if I can kind of understand where you guys are coming from. Also, you guys are spending time with men in like a, first off, weird fucking men. Unique setting. Very yes. Very men. strange men. Yes. Like at a comedy club. Like Some if of them don't know room, how to act. Yeah. Most of them don't. Most people down there, including the women, are fucking bonkers. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, and then it's also, it's usually like before a show or after a show. So before everybody's nervous and acting fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. people are Trying either drunk or they're like the adrenaline from doing well or bombing. Yeah. Yeah. You're kind yeah, of yeah. around like the craziest people with the highest or lowest. And we're also being, <laughs> yeah. we're being thought of as, uh, uh, you know, at this point in our career as colleagues, not as women. Yeah. So we're also like privy to conversations that we really shouldn't be. Yeah. Sure. Sometimes we overhear men say things about women. They're like, Oh, that's how you think. Oh, that hurts. But definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I, I can't decide whether I appreciate the brutal honesty or I'd rather be ignorant to it. Do you, you have know? conversations like do you adjust what you're saying when female comedians are around? Do you I think? do. <laughs> oh, thanks. <Yeah. laughs> what, what to make it seem like you care more? About? No, I see again. I, I don't do things like calculated right. So shit. What, right, but what I mean, but that, there's I don't <laughs> nothing think that, about this is calculated. Yeah, I don't think per, like protecting someone is calc. It can be calculated. Here's yeah. what, here's this is a. I don't know if you guys are gonna appreciate this, but we'll see. I think if you say something fucked up to a female comic, there's a chance she she can tell on you. Right. So yeah. this is this is this is just survival. Kind of. If yeah. it, if you say something fucked up to a dude comic and he tells on you, everyone's gonna be like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, right. If right. you if I say something mean to a female comic, she could You're a bully. She could tweet it or post oh, about right, it. Oh right, right. And, and people like, would actually listen. And then six other women will jump in and be like, Yeah, he, he was said, a fucking asshole to me. It's like I was never mean to you. I don't know who you are. Right, right. They right. just have something <laughs> in them against I don't remember that conversation. Sure. But yeah, I'm drunk a lot at these fucking clubs. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I probably have been an mouth. asshole several times. Yeah. Being an asshole is not like report. I mean, to me, it's like uh, how, how everyone's allowed to be an asshole. Yeah, I agree. But to a certain extent, I mean, there's, yeah. you know, there's a there's a difference between like being an asshole or also like you're allowed to have a bad day. Like you can't yeah. Be, yeah. you can't you're just be your best self every day. It's not it's that's crazy for someone to expect that. Has a woman ever said anything fucked up to you? Yeah. Like what? Um. Sometimes female comics, they can get a little handsy. 
I'm oh, little, handsy. Yeah, Shit, yeah. And really? I'm, I'm, I don't care. <laughs> you don't? No, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Men but don't like, feel violated when they... They're, no, not violated. Some but do. Still, there's always a part of me that's like, man, if these roles were reversed. Right. Well, or be, if you did feel be, violated... it would be over. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But I agree with oh, you. You're yeah. right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Uh, but why? So, it's interesting that you don't feel violated like because you don't feel threatened by them. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Like it's not like a physical a threat to your physical safety. So how do you... Of a, it's kind of like, oh. Adorable. It's was, it was funny you think of me like that. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're surprised that yeah, they're sexually yeah. attracted to you? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> you want to climb this tree? So yeah. how do you handle it when something like that happens? I laugh, laugh and walk yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, all right, lady. You fucking lunatic. <laughs> but sometimes that can make women feel rejected. Have, has a woman ever felt rejected because you laughed at um, They her? should, yeah. Yeah, well, they did get rejected. It's like, a, it's, I'm not, all right. The example I'm thinking of is like a girl like pinching my butt. Right. Oh, weird. That's so like, and like 1950s. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. It's not like she was like trying to do something. Like didn't she was, grab like, your dick. fucking with me, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a weird way to fuck with someone. <laughs> I don't though. think a female comics ever grab my dick. Okay, that's that's good. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad you feel safe in the community. I feel pretty safe. Yeah, women are bad. <laughs> God damn it! Have you ever? Um, Come on, guys. What have you, have yeah. you ever rejected a woman and she reacted badly? I've been thinking about this a lot. How bad? I'm trying to write a bit about how bad women are at reject rejection, like getting rejected for sex. Like it's happened to me a handful of times, but boy, I'll never forget it. Yeah, I've done that. And they reacted poorly. Like what? How how they react? <laughs> Just continuously DMing or texting. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. After and that makes you less attracted to them, correct? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> like zero attraction. Yeah. 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 That's desperation. Um, have you found in your sexual career that um, in the, in quotes the word crazy like crazy women are better in bed? Hmm. Like you're kind of uh, nuts. I don't know. I really don't because I'm I'm of the belief all women are fucking crazy. So mm, tell me more. Crazy for a crazy person. I think you guys were gonna love that joke. Ah, no, it's just it's just funny. <laughs> we can go off the rails quicker than you, yeah, yeah. but we don't shoot up schools. It's funny for a comedian to say that because I'm like you're also crazy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, yeah. What's your crazy look like? Like in your craziest moments, where you're like, ah, fuck, not my best. Um, usually just sad. Oh, you're <laughs> like quiet. <laughs> just not like by never like I'm never like yeah, you get the vote. I don't scream or anything. Yeah. Well, how was your household growing up? Like good. Yeah. Good relationship yeah. with your parents. Yeah. Great. Oh, OK. That was the thing about therapy. The guy was the one time I went to a therapist. He was like trying to get me to like hate my dad. Oh, really? God, that's like, therapist no, I sucked. love my dad. Right. He just kept being like, that's that's the problem. That's what it's like. Oh, wow. They do love to do that when you start therapy, though, because they assume because most people have childhood trauma that they start at that. Yeah. And I actually walked into therapy and then she started doing the first time I wa walked in and she started doing that. And I go, uh, you're costing me money right now. Yeah. So I was yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, can yeah. just tell you. I, the money. I was like, I assure you this is not the issue. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to bring you exactly to the point when the issue started and let's start from there because yeah. you're wasting my time and my money now. Yeah. And it she was, was like, OK, it was like three hundred dollars of fucking holy shit. Something crazy like that. Jesus. I was like, I'd just buy a Lexus. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that'll solve well, that for that one month lease. That would make me feel a yeah. little better. Yeah. Has yeah, yeah. money and success healed you? For sure. Mm -hmm. oh. No. <laughs> no. But, I mean, healed. I don't know. I'm healed not, in I'm any not, way? Like, fucked up. You guys are making me feel like I'm fucked up. Yeah, but... No, 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 no. I'm just saying, um, has it healed you in any way? It, yeah, I guess. Or like, what? All of a sudden, I'm not worried about money. That's okay. so great. So that's cool. Yeah, that's but, awesome. Yeah. Then it feels weird. Then it feels like relationships feel different. Like oh, sometimes, how so? you know, like your friends start treating you different. Yes. Yeah. And then you're like, well, that's weird. Yeah. Like they start walking on eggshells around you or they start. Sometimes. Or they're a little nicer to you. They're a lot nicer. I like that part, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I part. actually feel like I mean even, you, even now. Right. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you guys are. There's certain people out there. Nice. Yeah, you guys are very nice. Well, because you know what? Because I see people and people have certainly, you know, treated us yeah. like. And it's it's so gross, especially among comics who like our love language is mean yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I like that and it's enjoyable because you don't I don't feel like I have to put on my P's and Q's around people and so it's like why would I treat you differently no, I agree. like I, I'm, I'm excited to see my peers see yeah. some of them you yeah some definitely not um yeah. <laughs> but like some of them because they're talented and you go yeah like it's like you're talented and I like when the industry or the fans it really in your that. case yeah. pick the right people pick the people who are talented yeah not just pick the people who like, you know, are of the time that we need to, you know, have, yeah. have what the industry decides they're looking for right now. For sure. Um, that's so weird. Have you ended friendships because uh, of like behavior changes? No, no. But I have stopped talking to almost everyone. 
Wow, everyone. Just, no, I've just been so busy. I like yeah. don't. I I suck at texting. Yeah, I me too. I suck at calling back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's exhausting. Yeah, it's just your your brain just like uh. Yeah. And then we have something like video games. Like, it's like oh, yeah. let me just oh, yeah. let me just lose myself. Somebody in will this. text me a question and I'll just like answer it in my head. Yeah, yeah. I do that. And all put the my time. phone down. <laughs> keep playing Xbox. I do that all the time. I've yeah. had so many friends. And a week so later, be like, oh yeah, I forgot that guy texted. Well, because you only have so much energy to give other people. Decisions take up a lot of energy. So in this relationship with this girlfriend, have you like? What do you do to maintain a bond besides living together? <laughs> I love it. We hang out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you have like, I know like some comics who really wanted to like work towards marriage or something, they would have like a designated night when they were not allowed to do stand up. Do you have something like no. that? Okay. <laughs> Man. So, all right. So I'm, I'm very, like, I didn't know it was Valentine's Day. I was just going to ask oh, about Valentine's Day. <laughs> okay. I so I put in. She was probably I, waiting. Yeah. I put, mm. I did like six shows that night. Fuck. Are yeah, you yeah, serious? Yeah. 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 So that's a busy night. But I told comics. her, I told her. I was like, look. In fact, I thought it was Wednesday. It was Tuesday. Right. Yeah. So that week, I was like, "Look, I didn't know Valentine's Day was Wednesday." Oh, so you at least she knew. was like, "It's Tuesday." Okay. And I was okay. like, "Either didn't way, know that either. either way, I have shows, <laughs> and I'm really, really sorry." It's the 14th. Okay. That's that what she likes about me. She likes that I I work hard. Yeah. Okay. That's good. And then, did you do anything like after to make up for it? Yeah, I was Eat nice. I was nice. <laughs> <laughs> for hours. Yeah. Did you give her anything? You were nice. Or? Yeah, got her stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so gift like gift tangible gifts? No, just compliments. Okay. No. Are you doing a bit? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what the fuck? Well, what if I didn't get her a gift? I'm gonna look like a dickhead. I did not get her. A yeah, gift. but it's not like us bringing it up on the yeah. podcast. Is she's all of a sudden gonna be like, oh yeah, he didn't give me a gift? Yeah, like she yeah. already knows and has been yeah, stewing over all right. it. Yeah, yeah. It's not us. You act like it's us bringing it up that's gonna get you if in you're trouble. It up, where it's like, we've already stop moved pulling past a it. mirror to my own behavior. We already moved past it. <laughs> we've already gotten in a fight about well, it. Men to the think about relationships so little, like they do, but they can be in functioning healthy relationships and it's fine and it makes me realize like we especially having conversations with male comics yeah. it's like fuck i put too much thought into this shit it's a lot of energy goes into yeah. it and you don't need you don't need it you gotta save that for other things it feels I more mean. like a logistical need for men like it's just like oh you think about you think about it more like in a logistical it. sense like does this person have like this this and this and can they fit into the life that i have kind of created for myself well enough and that's yeah. kind of the end of it i don't know I think whereas i'm looking for someone to like speak to my soul Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's... Chick shit? Kind of. Yeah. It is, though. You're not yeah, wrong. Like I like, want somebody to speak to my soul. It's like, we yeah, like, are you talking about? But I've met someone like that before, so I know it exists, and now once you have a taste of it, you can't yeah. go back. Yeah. <laughs> once you get a bond that deep, you're like, oh, that's what are you going to do? That's what I yeah. like. You know? You go, oh, this is this is worth all the, the other bullshit. Yeah. I don't have... Well, I have a very weird life. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's do. also very weird. No, I know you do. Yeah. I know you do. But I'm saying, like, for me to find a girl that can deal with that. Yeah, yeah. And is like, great. You're going on the road again. Great. Yeah, it's, I like, think good. it's rare. This is cool what you're doing. Did you cool. have to have a yeah. talk about what that would look like? Because I mean, I think people well, that was, yeah, that was people hard. don't understand no. just how much time you're going to be away and how much the, how this career is like going to take up a lot more of your yeah. life than uh, the typical career. Yeah, we've had. A, yeah, we had to have that talk. Because when we started dating, it was during COVID. Oh. So I was able to see her a lot, right? Constantly. And you didn't have shit to do yeah. except Zoom shows. So yeah. you know, no, I did the road. Oh wow, hell I yeah! Doing, I was doing the road the yeah. whole time. When well, your fans yeah. don't care about it, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, make a living, baby. I went down to Texas and was yeah, doing you shows. Did. It was yeah. they were all sold out. Texas, yep. no Florida. distance. <laughs> yeah, because no, no one has work, so they they're all free to go it to your was, shows. No, I walked, even I walked in. I was like, oh, this is fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's so funny. But at the beginning, yeah, we were dating during COVID, so it was like I, it, we were together a lot. But now, especially now, like I'm on the road th three or four weekends in a row, one weekend off, three or yeah. four on. Yeah, sure. So yeah, it's yeah. tough. Yeah, yeah. And then that's I'm home three days a week. Right. And I'm usually tired, and then I usually do spots. How? At night. Yeah. What, have you ever like? Does your sex life in, in across any relationship uh, like suffer from that? Like from because like you're fucking working helps. all the time. Oh, it does. It helps. Yeah. Okay. Because everybody handles it differently. Sometimes when people are you're tired, horny when like, you come home. Yeah. As soon as oh, I get okay. home. Yeah. <laughs> get that pussy out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much are do you stay in contact when you're on the road with your girlfriend? I'm pretty bad at that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we text every day and call. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, if, as long as there's like communication every day, I mean, what more can you ask? Yeah, I'm for, just really? terrible at texting. She's like, hey, 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and I forget to tell her things. Like in big important things? Big important like, things. Like, you know, my aunt died. <laughs> yeah, like I bought a house. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You bought a house and you I didn't forgot tell to tell her. her I bought a lake house last week. <gasps> in PA? Yeah, in the Poconos. Oh, shit, dude. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, lake? Yeah. Well, you don't want to say that here, but tell me later. That's awesome. Uh, I want to uh, buy a house by Lake Wall and Paul back. Yeah, house. it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's your. It was something you I don't necessarily have to tell her, but it's kind of just more strange that yeah, you Yeah, but did. I'm just bad at it. Like, we'll be sitting there, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I bought a house. Yesterday. Yeah, so all the time you were looking for a house, you <laughs> yeah. got a broker, you got a mortgage, like you meant, yeah, you, you talked to your that. bank, you just didn't. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's so funny. I forgot it, yeah. Was she like, okay. I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Am I and invited? I was like, here's the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How big's your house? It's big. I like got it. I split it with my dad and my sister. Nice. Yeah. Slippery slope, but yeah. When oh, I said I have a good relationship with your parents, I bought a house with my parents. I stopped talking to them. Really? Yeah. Be, big old beach house in Ocean oh, City. Oh, no. Yeah. And you stopped talking to them? I be- bought all cash paid. Yeah. And I Ooh. stopped talking to them. Yeah. But it seems Why'd like you've better because I realized that uh, it wasn't going to work out <laughs> our relationship. Like there's just manipulation. With your parents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not. God damn! I can't break up with a woman. There was. <laughs> you were like this. Isn't Honestly, working. I didn't think it was going to happen. I never thought I would uh, have the balls to do it. But uh, yeah, just realizing things about the relationship, and you're like, wait a minute, the whole time you were a dick to me, and I didn't fucking see it, but everybody mm. else saw it, and now I really see it, and I'm pissed. Oh wow. Yeah, and it turns out you can't get like a, a, a like a loan against your house anymore because the interest rates are too high but anyway that's not your situation yeah yeah for sure they got a fucking beach house hell yeah yeah they live in year round so that's good at least they live in a year round hopefully a hurricane gets them nah i mean it's my investment too so (laughs) (laughs) and i still want them to be safe even though we're not talking well if a hurricane got it also then the insurance would pay you back and honestly that'd be sick because then i get my money back yeah yeah, i I want i don't want their house to blow away uh but anyway that's nice that's nice so you bought it with your okay. So yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. if you bought a house by yourself and didn't tell your girlfriend that you live it with. That'd also, be I fucking was insane. I was pretty absent in the decision making of the house. Oh, okay, like right. my family was like they were doing me, the appointments, and, and I was like, yeah. all right, yeah, go ahead. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's why it was a little more. So wait, can you have summer parties and invite yeah. all the comedians? Yeah, I think I'm going to start prepping in that house. Prepping? Get, yeah, get him fucking gun. Oh, some, right, right, yeah. right. We should get Prepping, ATVs. Wait. Prepping for doomsday. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, that's what I thought you meant, but I just yeah. wanted to really That's not confirm. what I thought you meant. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't ATVs know what, is good. Yeah, ATV. I don't know what that's going to do for doomsday, but like, yeah. It's a real knock at the cabin door, whatever it's like situation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Get a nice gun. Have you ever shot a gun? Yeah. 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 You guys Obviously. like them? Uh, I want to shoot one actually because they they oh, freak me out. You've never shot one? No, I've never shot oh, one. I, have. I want to. I'm anti gun, but I but they're not going away. So I learned how to use yeah, both might as well. a handgun and a shotgun. Because well, yeah. I'm always like, if I'm in a fight and somebody has a gun and it, it accidentally slides towards me, I want to fucking know how to use it. Oh well, you're not gonna. <laughs> that's never gonna happen. It, may, it might. It happens in my head. <laughs> Once you learn how to work it, I, I have think too bad of a temper though. I should never own a gun. Not that I yeah. would ever shoot somebody, but I would wave it at somebody with no bullets in it, and that would mm. get me in jail. Yeah, I have a bad temper. I get road rage. Ugh, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Nah, it's not that crazy. Yeah, it's not. It's the same reason my dad won't get a gun in his right. car. Yeah, yeah. Because he would use it. Yeah. yeah. Or I would yeah. just, I would threaten. Yeah. You know. It's good to know yourself like that. It, yeah, sure. exactly. At least you know what your limits are, you know? Yeah. So what was the conversation like before you, when you decided to move in with your current current girl, uh, girlfriend? Well, she lived not- in D.C., Oh, so, so she was started, the whole time. Okay. Yeah. So then during COVID, I would go down there. She would come up to my apartment. Oh, uh, right. And then, yeah. You might as well like, live together. Yeah, you might as well just stay up here. How long were you dating before that happened? It was quick. It was We we were together for like a year before we moved in. Uh, that's New York speed. Yeah. yeah, that's like a normal amount, I feel. Is it? A yeah. year? Yeah. It felt fast. <laughs> because you were on the road i mean yeah. i agree with you but i think for pretty quick but. but i think for normal people yeah. yes that's like a normal amount of time what do you like most about living with a girlfriend and what do you like least about it because you've lived with several mm. the thing i, I like cramped. most is now the girl i'm with now is it's not cramping at all nice uh she, she cleans oh nice which is great you it's don't like clean. whenever i get off the road there's a very clean house. Oh, that's nice. It's fucking awesome. Coming home to a clean house is the She's best. She's a good classic lady. You guys, yeah, nineteen fifties shit. Hate her. What a bitch. I don't Cleans, hate cooks. I mean, I cook. I well, I don't cook, but I clean. <laughs> I don't hate that. It's just funny because I'm like, I would also love if I came home to a clean house. Yeah, and yeah. food from the road. It's like yeah. it's like men. Well, men it. act like only. Everything. The, but I okay, could do that good. too, Shay. You know no, what I know, I'm I know. But I'm saying, I would love a house husband. I'm very on record as one would love a. I would love like awesome. You know, I love alcoholics like an alcoholic writer who's working on a manuscript that's never gonna. 
going to get finished. Oh, I love that. But he, but he can cook and he can clean. He's and he's not going to clean. And he's going to nah. be a little rascal. Sometimes people get uh, like drunk or high and like to clean. Oh, very true. I love cleaning with a beer and a blunt. Oh, give me really? a, maybe a yeah. drunk artistic guy. Oh, yeah. Right. He's going to clean the shit up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be <laughs> real clean. clean. Like crazy. Spotless. And then and then just like to like play with my dog. So what do you like least about living with a girl? Like through your history of hmm. girlfriends. Well, now it's now I'm all right. Before, like when I was struggling in comedy, yeah, it was embarrassing. <laughs> what was to have someone witness my life? Yeah. <laughs> that like, happens a lot. Men, nothing, you can't run away from not that. Successful. Men literally yeah. have to change girlfriends if you were the girlfriend that they, that they that they were embarrassed in front of. And I know that I've figured that yeah. out in this show. They have to when they get embarrassed, like, they literally can't be with like, you anymore. Redo. I got to start fresh. It yeah. does feel good starting with a clean slate of somebody that doesn't know your bullshit yet. That is promising. That yeah. feels good. It's like the new school year, you know? Like, oh, this is my chance to do it right. <laughs> True. <laughs> Every, I will say this is kind of fucked up, but ever since uh, the SNL, like when I got canceled on SNL, however you want to what say happened? it. What happened? No. <laughs> uh, ever since then, I really stopped faking. You might as well. Like, yeah, that, really that'll, that'll faking for, what? Just like, you know how in like the beginning of a relationship, you're like, oh. I, I like reading. Right, <laughs> then, right. You're your you're, best self. You're like, I haven't read a book in three years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I've, I've just been kind of me the whole time. Yeah. yeah. I definitely try not to do that because you're setting yourself up for a failure if yeah. you're your best self in the beginning. You want to have moments of greatness, but you don't want to come in yeah. perfect. That's a Most recipe for disaster. That. I know, and I, it's, it's, I used to do that. You're correct. Yeah. It's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, have you ever had a, have you ever dated somebody that they like presented in a way that was totally not who they actually were and you found I out? I really haven't them? dated that much. Oh. How oh, many major dating. relationships okay. have so you, you been get in? in relationships quick. Three or four? Three or four. Okay, so like, oh. But two were a while. major ones? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The one from PIN yeah, and then the current one? one? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, that's it. Do you want to get married and have kids? Yeah. But right now it's you busy. You busy. I'm pretty busy for the yeah. foreseeable future. So yeah. we have to wait till the NCAA video game comes out. When that comes out, I'll be I'll be grounded. <laughs> You'll be home. <laughs> I'll be home for about three years. I can stay in the kids' room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. All right. Well, well thanks. You, thanks for letting us interrogate you. Um, yeah. Do you want to do some advice? Oh, definitely. I'd give great advice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you sure? <laughs> no, I'm not going to give good advice. Let's go. All right. Well, let's see. This one's called The Curse of the Flaccid Dick. So let's Ooh, read it. Actually, I might give some good advice on this. Okay. <laughs> that sounds right up my alley on All this right. One. So this is from one of our Oops. listeners. Uh, I've recently had some consistently insane sexual interactions with guys, and I know there's nobody else I'd rather express this frustrating woe to than you both. Thanks and for listening. Shangles. And yeah. Reading. Yeah. yeah. She didn't sign up I for this, but I do love say. it. Uh, I want someone I can hit up to come over, have some banging sex with, maybe go out for a drink now and then, just simple and fucking casual fun. Is that too much to ask for? No. So I'm on Hinge. Yes. I've matched and messaged. <laughs> Women shouldn't do that. It's gross. Go ahead. Ew. Uh, I've matched and messaged a few guys, and it did not take long for me to realize how badly this sucks. I've been called so many strange compliments, and the audacity some dudes have to act the way they do will forever disappoint me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I've met some cool, uh, some guys cool enough to meet up with a with and hang out in person. In this period of time, I've met up with four guys specifically. I'm only telling you this number of guys because all four of them have one thing in common. They can't fuck me. Their dicks yeah. don't get hard. One guy said he was, quote, Corn. too high because he had just smoked a blunt. Uh, they had just smoked a blunt together. Another guy said, we this has never happened to me before. I think it's because <laughs> I really like you. That's nice. What? Another guy <laughs> asked nice. me to suck his soft dick to <laughs> help it get hard. That's not nice. Classic. Most of these guys were nice enough to try to overcompensate pleasuring me, but honestly, that just turned me off even more. And a oh. lot of the time, I just curved uh, the situation. Curbed, I think she means the situation or ended it when we don't have sex it sometimes leads to just cuddling and super affectionate stuff and it's literally everything i'm not looking for right now wow so i break off hanging with them any further right it was only with guy number four while he was in the bathroom for an uncomfortably long time, oh, no. probably Taking trying to get hard, oh. <laughs> that I was laying on his scratchy bed comforter naked, thinking I never want to see a soft dick again. So does this make me like a fuck girl? I don't no. think I'm like a hot 10 supermodel, but I know anyone would be lucky to have this fit and banging body because I'm not going to be 27 forever. True. I just thought this would be the- Unless you die. <laughs> True, you can always die. 
at any time. I just thought this would be the one easy thing to seek in the dating world. And how come every dick I come across is flaccid and non-operative? I have expressed this frustration to my close friends, but they are all in relationships and don't think they understand how badly I just want to get fucked sideways and good. Any advice or thoughts you have for my quest for a nice hard dick is greatly appreciated. Good Lord. (laughs) What say you, Shane? (laughs) I would say stop talking like a goddamn trucker. Oh, well, she's talking to us. That probably us. gets people's dongs soft. Re- even you from from yeah, Mechanicsburg? Yeah, that's fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> Just be a lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I don't know. If I ran into like five dry pussies in a row, I'd start looking in the mirror a little bit. Right, right, right. I do well, agree you with do, you. You do go, there is a common denominator here other than the flaccid dicks. It's me. Uh, also, what are they doing before they fuck? Right. If you're going to a bar every single time. Weed doesn't, weed doesn't affect do your dick. No, it doesn't. I've never met a guy who said weed affects their dick. And I've met a lot of stoners that no. I've had sex with. I haven't. Ooh, yeah, I was like, I was like, I know people who've smoked weed and... But it, yeah, I don't think it was Usually the weed that was doing their Or it makes you think dick. about something. Oh, like gross like, that you can't get no, out of like Paranoia? Gonna, yeah, like I'm going to read mm. my dad's eulogy someday. Oh, uh, right, right, right. Um, and then you're like, I don't want to fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get this out of I'm my head. Die. Have you ever had issues with flaccid dick? I mean. It, oh, yeah. <laughs> so does, is it. Do you I drink think, a lot. Is it drinking? Is it does porn have anything to do with it? It's drinking. I don't think it's porn. Okay. I think it's drinking. You, yeah. And it's, when you jerk it is, off. it's mental. Yeah, sure. Right. And so, but so, what's going on in your head so when like, you can't? I'll I'll like not be able to get hard, and then I'll be able to go whack off by myself easily. Right, because you feel more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. But That's are you what, ever not hard because you're not uh, attracted enough to the woman? Is that the, is that a common circumstance? That would have to be like pretty intense. That'd they have be to like be a, a real troll. like a smell. That's yeah, what I. Right, that's right. what I or thought. Something crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a lot to turn off. The <laughs> yeah. But alcohol for sure. Is it yeah. so? Is it more often when it's mental, like you're worried about impressing her? What What is the if mental? It's mental. It's usually I drank. I'm not going to be able to get hard. Oh fuck. Oh, How and then you, so you're like it's a yeah, self fulfilling yeah. problem. Oh, or okay. just like what if I can't get hard? Right. The anxiety of it. Yeah. Okay. And you don't think por- like because porn. Uh, I was having a conversation about this with a comic the other day. Like porn. And I get it. Like porn, is, you don't have to be vulnerable at all. You just watch something that you really like yeah. and you're touching yourself and there's no one in the room. There's no one looking at you. There's no pressure. And so it's like easy. Like, have you ever lost your erection watching porn? Yeah. Like I don't. It has to have happened once. Really? Yeah. I can't. But like it's. But the, you, you, I mean, the, the thing is like you're taking away. Maybe if there was a time where I was like, I'm going to whack off. Don't even feel like it. Right. Right. <laughs> like right. Midway right. Right through. You're like, what am I? Doing? I don't want to do, do this. Right. Uh. But yeah, I would say sounds like a her thing a little. Yeah, she's the common denominator. I don't disagree with you. That's a kind of I yeah. mean, I get very uh, aggressive. What's advice. a fuck girl? It's um, the opposite of she's saying like a fuck boy, like just like of someone who just like wants to get it in and doesn't care about like people people's like emotions. Yeah. Isn't that exactly what she said she was doing? Yeah, I mean, I think she. So I guess she is right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, I think she is a bit of a fuck girl. <laughs> but I don't. What did she say that I'm not a fuck girl, or did she say? She said, does that make me a fuck? Girl? Yeah. So it's does like, this make me like a fuck girl? Yeah. I mean, I think she is. Yeah. yeah. Nice. No, there's not anything Nothing necessarily wrong with, wrong with it. No, you just want to get laid. So yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to get laid. When you encounter like a flaccid dick, when you don't want one, how do you handle that? <laughs> <laughs> what? Like when like I like when you're trying to it? fuck somebody yeah. and you can't get hard. Like how do you? Uh, it's always interesting to me the 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 little dance that the two people do. Like uh, er, er, er. yeah, I've I'm to the point where I really don't care. <laughs> nice. I'm like, look, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. And then <laughs> maybe if we go to sleep, something will happen. <laughs> maybe what later. Happen? Maybe like, tomorrow. Like we can in the fuck, middle of the night. The night. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nudger. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's something fun. like that. Yeah. <laughs> when great. I get hard next, I'll let you know. I don't want know. to tell you. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not bragging. No, I didn't It's not great. Were. What do you yeah. guys do? I mean, we, we can fuck, you know, I don't think my vagina has ever been so dry that I couldn't have sex. No, of course I'm saying, you know? what do you do with a flaccid dong? Uh, is there anything, is there anything you want me to do? Is there anything? Sometimes that hurts though. When the girl starts trying. Oh, well, like, I don't oh, try to put it in. More, no, no. I mean like, what can I do to help? Oh, and then that it's hurts even more emotionally. Like, oh fuck, this is getting worse. Oh right, yeah. right. Yeah, right. for sure. Okay, you can't try thing. too long because then it gets uncomfortable. I go, oh, just yeah. what's on Netflix? Yeah, I'll just that's cuddle. good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just change the. Time. I get girl, so I excited like, for the sex though that I'm like, mm, okay, fine. Yeah, I don't care because I know it's embarrassing. I don't. I never want like it. Like, no one likes to feel embarrassed. You is know? it embarrassing? Yeah. Okay. 
Because it just ha- I mean, it just happens. <laughs> yeah, no, I know men are embarrassed Definitely. no matter how nice we are about it. Yeah. So I just try to be like, oh, it's so fine. What's on Netflix is a good answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's you're fine. like, no, it's it's cool. Yeah. That'll help. Okay. And then Probably get hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it is all, is all mental. You forget. Yeah, no, like, I know, like, because, oh, like, when people try to, like, overly help, it embarrasses me, mm, like, right. in, in any circumstance. Yeah. You know? So I, but I have enough man in my brain to know yeah. that, I think. Yeah. You know, yeah. the you ma- enough, enough male on. ego. That's great. Shane, did you have so much fun on this podcast? I loved it. Thank you so much for doing it. No, I really did. We this really appreciate fun. it. We this appreciate it. Sorry, I'm a little guarded with this. No, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Um, no, we appreciate you. And where, what do you want to promote? Uh, where can uh, we find you? We just... Yeah, what will the ladies Find me on love? tour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally nothing I do. Yeah. Uh, I don't think this, you listen, I, I think we've... I think we've, my stand-up... Yeah, like, we've trained our yeah. audience to know, you know, the difference the difference between a joke and reality. Listen, you. I think you got a sense of who Shane is. He is one of the best stand-ups working today. So if you like, you know, a more abrasive, I would say, real real comedy, <laughs> if you like real. it real, not Instagram comedy, uh, then I think I you'll would, like Shane. Thanks. I would say uh, Gillian Keeves. It's on Amazon. Oh, yeah. It's on oh, Amazon special. now. Yes. Congrats. So Gillian Keeves is a sketch show, I think. Yeah. It's a little more lady friendly. <laughs> I like that. Nice. <laughs> yeah. There's awesome. some ladies in the sketches. You'll yeah. feel safe. There's a couple broads in there. Ooh, you let women lines. on camera? We gave them a few lines. Nice. Oh, boy. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, this has been Guys We Fuck, the anti slut Jimmy podcast. We'll talk to you Wait, next Wait, that's what it is? Friday. Yeah, sorry. Fuck. Trick you. Shut up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta go therapy, girl.